शिक्षा ही के चरित्र का निर्माण करती है शिक्षा ही समाज के नैतिक मूल्यों को स्थापित करती है शिक्षा ही राष्ट्र निर्माण का सबसे प्रभावी संबल है शिक्षा के प्रसार की महान सेवा का एक अविरत दीप स्तंभ है अमर सेवा मंडल जिसे प्रज्वलित किया था सुप्रसिद्ध समाज सेवी शिक्षाविद एवं दूरदृष्टा स्वर्गीय गोविंद राव वंजारी ने प्रत्येक व्यक्ति ज्ञान प्राप्ति का अधिकार रखता है उसके लिए जाति धर्म आर्थिक स्थिति व्यवसाय ये समस्त दायरे कोई मायना नहीं रखते इस हेतु से प्रत्येक व्यक्ति को शिक्षा मिले जिससे व्यक्ति नहीं बल्कि व्यक्तित्व का सृजन हो यह विचारधारा थी स्वर्गीय श्री गोविंद राव बंजारी की एक त्रैसी साली वंजारी साहब ने यह कॉलेज की स्थापना के लिए वंजारी साहब शिक्षण पास वंचित रहते हैं परिस्थिति मुटल कुछ अभी तीव्र इच्छा मना में निर्माण जी कि जी अवस्था जी आप वाटा आई ती इत भाग मुलाटाला यू नए आना उच्च शिक्षण अपन दिल पाजे या उद्देशा ने संस्थे की स्थापना के लिए शिक्षण अतिशय प्राधान्य डिशिप्लिन अतिशय महत्वा सगैंस सहकार अपनी स्वप्न अपन पूर्ण करू शक नहीं सगैंस सहकार लगते खालपासन वरपर्यंत जेव सगी मणस जीव तोड़ून तैयार स्वतः झोकून देता ते काम यशस्वी होते हैं हा कॉलेज मे आसा सग आम खूब मिला सहभाग ये साहबान स्वप्न है और अभिजीत तो नवीन काला नवीन काला गरज है नवीन काला सग महित है तो दृष्टि हा कॉलेज मे महत्वा भर पड़ी है और पुढ़े सुधा पड़ना है अमर सेवा मंडल का दिव्य प्रवास प्रारंभ हुआ 12 सितंबर उन्नीस के सूर्योदय के साथ जब कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय के रूप में शिक्षा का एक छोटा सा बीज अंकुरित हुआ पूर्व प्रधानमंत्री स्वर्गीय राजीव गांधी के कर कमलों द्वारा जिसका उद्घाटन किया गया प्रारंभ से ही मैत्रीपूर्ण वातावरण कौशल्यपूर्ण अध्यापन एवं संस्कार पूर्ण अध्ययन के मार्ग पर कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय अग्रेसर होता रहा जिसके कारण आज यह संपूर्ण मध्य भारत का आदर्श शिक्षा संस्थान माना जाता है यहां कला वाणिज्य तथा विज्ञान संकाय में विद्यार्थी सर्वोत्तम शिक्षा से लाभान्वित हो रहे हैं इस भव्य वास्तु में विज्ञान शाखा के सामान्य विषयों के अलावा इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स कंप्यूटर साइंस बायोटेक्नोलॉजी माइक्रोबायोलॉजी कॉस्मेटिक टेक्नोलॉजी पर्यावरण विज्ञान इत्यादि विशेष शाखाओं की पदवी का भी प्रयोजन है कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय की सफलता में विशेष उपलब्धि के रूप में डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एम और एम का विशेष उल्लेख करना होगा अनेक प्रकार की गतिविधियों का यह केंद्र विद्यार्थियों को व्यवस्थापन के अंतरिम तथा प्रायोगिक पहलुओं से अवगत कराता है विगत तीन दशकों से भी अधिक काल शिक्षा के माध्यम से जागरूकता एवं सेवा का कार्य करने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध अमर सेवा मंडल द्वारा विभिन्न अभ्यासक्रमों के अलग अलग अनेक महाविद्यालय प्रारंभ किए गए ताकि युवा वर्ग समय की आवश्यकता एवं अपनी क्षमता के आधार पर अपना भविष्य निर्धारित कर सके अभियांत्रिकी इस सदी की आवश्यकता है अतः आज की पीढ़ी इस अभ्यासक्रम की ओर खींची जा रही है परंतु अंधी दौड़ को दरकिनार कर देश के एवं विद्यार्थियों के उज्जवल भविष्य के निर्माण के लिए पूरे समर्पण एवं संकल्प के साथ कार्यरत है गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी प्राचीन काल में शिक्षा के लिए उपयुक्त वातावरण में शांत एवं प्राकृतिक सानिध्य में गुरुकुल के माध्यम से अध्ययन होता था वैसा ही परिवेश है गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी का नागपुर शहर के एकदम करीब मगर शहर की चहल पहल से दूर प्रकृति की मनोरम सुंदरता में यह भव्य इमारत सहज ही आकर्षित एवं प्रभावित करती है अध्ययन के लिए पूर्ण रूप से अनुकूल मैकेनिकल इलेक्ट्रिकल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स कंप्यूटर सभी संकायों की प्रयोगशालाएं अपने आप में सुसज्ज एवं विद्यार्थियों को परिपूर्ण अनुभव एवं ज्ञान देने के लिए सक्षम है यह महाविद्यालय मात्र इंजीनियरिंग की शिक्षा देने वाला महाविद्यालय नहीं अपितु समाज सेवा का अनुपम उदाहरण भी है 
यहाँ विद्यार्थियों की आर्थिक परिस्थिति को मद्देनजर रखकर उन्हें विभिन्न आधारों पर रियायतें भी दी जाती है आधुनिकतम किताबों जर्नल्स एवं रिसर्च पेपर से युक्त विशाल लाइब्रेरी ई लाइब्रेरी कम्युनिटी ऑडिटोरियम समय समय पर आयोजित कार्यशालाएं विभिन्न खेलों तथा एथलेटिक्स की सुविधाएं सांस्कृतिक आयोजन इत्यादि विद्यार्थियों के सर्वांगीण उन्नति के लिए पूरक परिवेश का निर्माण करते हैं यह एक ऐसा गुरुकुल है जहां दीवारों में ईटों के बीच संस्कारों का सीमेंट भरा है जहां ज्ञान की पावन हवा में सांस ली जाती है जहां व्यक्तित्व निर्माण ही सबसे बड़ा लक्ष्य है जहां सामाजिक महत्व नहीं अनुशासन ही प्राथमिकता है अमर सेवा मंडल के अन्य समस्त महाविद्यालयों की तरह ही गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी का पूरी तरह समर्पित शिक्षक वर्ग अपने ज्ञान से नहीं अपितु अपने आचरण एवं व्यवहार से देश के तकनीकी भविष्य का निर्माण करने के लिए संकल्पबद्ध है विद्यार्थियों का भविष्य एवं सुरक्षा देखते हुए अमर सेवा मंडल द्वारा इन सभी महाविद्यालयों में सिर्फ पदवीधर विद्यार्थी ही नहीं चेतना भी मुख ज्ञान संपन्न राष्ट्र के प्रहरी निर्माण किए जाते हैं एजुकेशन फॉर ऑल की संकल्पना के साथ में मेरे फादर स्वर्गीय गोविंद जी वंजारी इन्होंने कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय की स्थापना की डिसिप्लिन और अपने एकेडमिक्स के बलबूते पर विदर्भ के जाने माने महाविद्यालयों की पंक्ति में कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय का नाम शामिल हो गया कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय के साथ साथ उसी के बुनियाद पर हमने इस संस्था का विस्तारीकरण किया हमने इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज की स्थापना की पॉलिटेक्निक कॉलेज शुरू किया हमने लॉ कॉलेज शुरू किया फार्मेसी कॉलेज की स्थापना की हमने एजुकेशन की स्थापना की एम बी जैसे कोर्सेज शुरू किए और उसका विस्तारीकरण के साथ साथ एक अच्छा एजुकेशन देने का प्रयास हमने अपने संस्था के माध्यम से किया है आज हमारे संस्था के सभी महाविद्यालय फिर चाहे वो एकेडमिक्स एक्टिविटी हो स्पोर्ट्स एंड कल्चर हो प्लेसमेंट हो इंडस्ट्रियल लिंकेजेस हो रिसर्च एक्टिविटीज़ हो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हो इन सभी मामलों की गतिविधियों में अग्रेसर है और एक अच्छा बेस्ट एजुकेशन देने का प्रयास हमारी संस्था के माध्यम से है मैं चाहता हूँ कि विदर्भ के विद्यार्थी इस महाविद्यालय में अपना प्रवेश लें और वो इस संधि का लाभ लें और मैं अपने संस्था की ओर से अपने माध्यम से विद्यार्थियों के उज्जवल भविष्य के लिए उनको शुभकामनाएं देता हूँ धन्यवाद गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ विधि संकाय का यह महाविद्यालय अपने प्रकार का एकमात्र माना जाता है भविष्य के कुशल अधिवक्ताओं के निर्माण हेतु डिबेट एसोसिएशन लीगल एड सेंटर तथा मूट कोर्ट जैसी रचनात्मक व्यवस्थाएं यहाँ की गई हैं। कम्युनिकेशन व्यक्तित्व विकास करियर गाइडेंस एवं अन्य विषयों पर मार्गदर्शन यहाँ की विशेष गतिविधियां हैं इसके साथ साथ ही पर्यावरण के प्रति सचेत समाज का निर्माण यह ध्येय समक्ष रखते हुए इन्वायरमेंट सेल यह गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ की विशिष्ट पहचान है शहर से लगकर ही शहर की आपाधापी से दूर स्थित कमला नेहरू कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मेसी अपनी अलग पहचान रखता है पूर्णतः नियोजित प्रयोगशालाएं सर्वोत्तम उपकरण अंतर्राष्ट्रीय शोध पत्र नवीनतम सीडी एवं किताबों से सज्ज लाइब्रेरी 24 घंटे इंटरनेट सुविधा यह समस्त आधुनिकतम सुविधाएं इस महाविद्यालय को विशेष बनाती है स्मिता वंजारी अमर सेवा मंडल इस संस्था की कोषाध्यक्ष हैं साथ ही संस्था के विद्यार्थियों के विकासाभिमुख समस्त प्रकल्पों में वे विशेष ध्यान देकर उन्हें नियंत्रित करती हैं साथ ही वुमन सेल के माध्यम से विद्यार्थियों के सर्वांगीण विकास कार्यक्रमों का नियोजन भी वे करती हैं In today's scenario of unemployment, it is moral responsibility of all educational institutions to develop the student for their employment as well as making them good entrepreneur. We mainly concentrate on our training and placement division to help our student to make their career in their respective area. Over the period of time, we have been associated with so many multinational companies like TCS, Wipro, Eureka Forbes, Corny International, Infosys, HDFC, Mahindra and Mahindra, and other. We are looking forward to more industrial linkage for better exposure of the student. We have also signed up MOU with Huddersfield University UK, and also looking forward for more tie-up with international universities for exchange of education of our student. 
we hope that this kind of efforts of vanjari group will surely help students to make their career bright yahi nahi amar seva mandal ki or se काम काजी महिलाओं तथा विद्यार्थिनियों के लिए संपूर्ण आधुनिक सुविधाओं से युक्त कमला नेहरू गर्ल्स एवं वर्किंग वुमेन्स हॉस्टल अपने आप में एक विशेष उपलब्धि है संस्था के सक्करदरा स्थित कमला नेहरू गर्ल्स हॉस्टल व प्रियदर्शिनी गर्ल्स हॉस्टल में बाहर से आई हुई विद्यार्थिनियों के लिए अत्याधुनिक सुविधाओं की विशेष व्यवस्था है किताबी शिक्षा के अतिरिक्त विद्यार्थियों के व्यक्तित्व में निखार लाना शिक्षा का मूलभूत उद्देश्य है यह अमर सेवा मंडल की विचारधारा है इस दृष्टि से विभिन्न स्पर्धाओं का आयोजन प्राध्यापकों का विद्यार्थियों से विशेष आत्मिक संबंध एवं नवीनतम तकनीकी सुविधाओं की उपलब्धता यहाँ के महत्वपूर्ण पहलू हैं। जहाँ एक और शिक्षा का क्षेत्र व्यावसायिकता कृत्रिमता एवं औपचारिकता से बोझिल होता जा रहा है वही अपनी प्रामाणिक प्रतिबद्धता के साथ नैतिकता का पाठ पढ़ाने वाले अध्यापकों का निर्माण भी अमर सेवा मंडल कर रहा है गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ एजुकेशन के माध्यम से पढ़ाना यह मात्र किताबी ज्ञान को बांटने का काम नहीं बल्कि सर्वांगीण विकास के समस्त पहलुओं से विद्यार्थियों को अवगत कराना होता है इस आधार पर बी एड एम इन सभी पाठ्यक्रमों का अध्यापन नैसर्गिक सौंदर्य युक्त सौहार्द पूर्ण वातावरण में यहाँ होता है यह महाविद्यालय समाज के सशक्त प्रहरियों को निर्माण करने वाले शिक्षकों के निर्माण का कटिबद्ध स्रोत है विद्यादान सबसे बड़ी सेवा है और इसके साथ जब सामाजिक सेवा का अभियान जुड़ जाता है तब अमर सेवा मंडल जैसी संस्थाएं प्रेरक मार्गदर्शक बनकर समाज का देश का मार्गदर्शन करने के लिए आदर्श मानी जाती है यह बरगद यू ही खिलता रहे जिसकी छाव में अन्य महत्कार्य फलते फूलते रहे यही समय की आवश्यकता है दिल में है साथ है ज्ञान हम समाज की देश की हौसला दिल में है साथ है We move to build the nation. We redefine education. We move to build the nation. We redefine education. Har ghar me gyan ka deep jale. A shiksha ke andhere na pale. Har ghar me gyan ka deep jale. A shiksha ke. पले जीवन के लक्ष्य को पाने हम पढ़ते चले पढ़ते चले शिक्षा ही व्यक्ति के चरित्र का निर्माण करती है शिक्षा ही समाज के नैतिक मूल्यों को स्थापित करती है शिक्षा ही राष्ट्र निर्माण का सबसे प्रभावी संबल है शिक्षा के प्रसार की महान सेवा का एक अविरत दीप स्तंभ है अमर सेवा मंडल जिसे प्रज्वलित किया था सुप्रसिद्ध समाज सेवी शिक्षाविद एवं दूरदृष्टा स्वर्गीय गोविंद राव वंजारी ने प्रत्येक व्यक्ति ज्ञान प्राप्ति का अधिकार रखता है उसके लिए जाति धर्म आर्थिक स्थिति व्यवसाय ये समस्त दायरे कोई मायना नहीं रखते इस हेतु से प्रत्येक व्यक्ति को शिक्षा मिले जिससे व्यक्ति नहीं बल्कि व्यक्तित्व का सृजन हो यह विचारधारा थी स्वर्गीय श्री गोविंद राव बंजारी की एक त्रयासी साली वंजारी साहब ने यह कॉलेज की स्थापना के लिए वंजारी साहब शिक्षणापासन वंचित रहे होते परिस्थिति मुंटल कुछ तरी अभी तीव्र इच्छा तनामें निर्माण कि जी अवस्था जी आप वाटा आई ती इत भगत मुलाटाला यू नए आना उच्च शिक्षण अपन दिल पाजे य उद्देशा ने संस्थे की स्थापना के लिए शिक्षण आला अतिशय प्राधान्य डिशिप्लिन अतिशय महत्वा सगैंस सहकार्य अपनी स्वप्न अपन पूर्ण करू शकत नहीं 
सगळ्यांचं सहकार्य लागते खालपासून वरपर्यंत जेव्हा सगळी माणसं जीव तोडून त्याच्यामध्ये स्वतःला झोकून देतात तेव्हा ते कम यशस्वी होते आणि या कॉलेजमध्ये असा सगळ्यांचा आम्हाला खूप मिळालेला आहे सहभाग हे साहेबांचं स्वप्न आहे आणि अभिजित तर नवीन काळाचं आहे नवीन काळाला काय काय गरज आहे नवीन काळाची ते सगळं त्याला माहीत आहे आणि त्या दृष्टीने या कॉलेजमध्ये महत्त्वाची भर पडली आहे आणि पुढेसुद्धा पडणार आहे अमर सेवा मंडल का दिव्य प्रवास प्रारंभ हुआ 12 सितंबर उन्नीस के सूर्योदय के साथ जब कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय के रूप में शिक्षा का एक छोटा सा बीज अंकुरित हुआ पूर्व प्रधानमंत्री स्वर्गीय राजीव गांधी के कर कमलों द्वारा जिसका उद्घाटन किया गया प्रारंभ से ही मैत्रीपूर्ण वातावरण कौशल्यपूर्ण अध्यापन एवं संस्कार अध्ययन के मार्ग पर कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय अग्रेसर होता रहा जिसके कारण आज यह संपूर्ण मध्य भारत का आदर्श शिक्षा संस्थान माना जाता है यहां कला वाणिज्य तथा विज्ञान संकाय में विद्यार्थी सर्वोत्तम शिक्षा से लाभान्वित हो रहे हैं इस भव्य वास्तु में विज्ञान शाखा के सामान्य विषयों के अलावा इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स कंप्यूटर साइंस बायोटेक्नोलॉजी माइक्रोबायोलॉजी कॉस्मेटिक टेक्नोलॉजी पर्यावरण विज्ञान इत्यादि विशेष शाखाओं की पदवी का भी प्रयोजन है कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय की सफलता में विशेष उपलब्धि के रूप में डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एम और एम का विशेष उल्लेख करना होगा अनेक प्रकार की गतिविधियों का यह केंद्र विद्यार्थियों को व्यवस्थापन के अंतरिम तथा प्रायोगिक पहलुओं से अवगत कराता है विगत तीन दशकों से भी अधिक काल शिक्षा के माध्यम से जागरूकता एवं सेवा का कार्य करने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध अमर सेवा मंडल द्वारा विभिन्न अभ्यासक्रमों के अलग अलग अनेक महाविद्यालय प्रारंभ किए गए ताकि युवा वर्ग समय की आवश्यकता एवं अपनी क्षमता के आधार पर अपना भविष्य निर्धारित कर सके अभियांत्री की इस सदी की आवश्यकता है अतः आज की पीढ़ी इस अभ्यासक्रम की ओर खींची जा रही है परंतु अंधी दौड़ को दरकिनार कर देश के एवं विद्यार्थियों के उज्जवल भविष्य के निर्माण के लिए पूरे समर्पण एवं संकल्प के साथ कार्यरत है गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी प्राचीन काल में शिक्षा के लिए उपयुक्त वातावरण में शांत एवं प्राकृतिक सानिध्य में गुरुकुल के माध्यम से अध्ययन होता था वैसा ही परिवेश है गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी का नागपुर शहर के एकदम करीब मगर शहर की चहल पहल से दूर प्रकृति की मनोरम सुंदरता में यह भव्य इमारत सहज ही आकर्षित एवं प्रभावित करती है अध्ययन के लिए पूर्ण रूप से अनुकूल मैकेनिकल इलेक्ट्रिकल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स कंप्यूटर सभी संकायों की प्रयोगशालाएं अपने आप में सुसज्ज एवं विद्यार्थियों को परिपूर्ण अनुभव एवं ज्ञान देने के लिए सक्षम है यह महाविद्यालय मात्र इंजीनियरिंग की शिक्षा देने वाला महाविद्यालय नहीं अपितु समाज सेवा का अनुपम उदाहरण भी है यहाँ विद्यार्थियों की आर्थिक परिस्थिति को मद्देनजर रखकर उन्हें विभिन्न आधारों पर रियायतें भी दी जाती है आधुनिकतम किताबों जर्नल्स एवं रिसर्च पेपर से युक्त विशाल लाइब्रेरी ई लाइब्रेरी कम्युनिटी ऑडिटोरियम समय समय पर आयोजित कार्यशालाएं विभिन्न खेलों तथा एथलेटिक्स की सुविधाएं सांस्कृतिक आयोजन इत्यादि विद्यार्थियों के सर्वांगीण उन्नति के लिए पूरक परिवेश का निर्माण करते हैं यह एक ऐसा गुरुकुल है जहाँ दीवारों में ईटों के बीच संस्कारों का सीमेंट भरा है जहां ज्ञान की पावन हवा में सांस ली जाती है जहां व्यक्तित्व निर्माण ही सबसे बड़ा लक्ष्य है जहां सामाजिक महत्व नहीं अनुशासन ही प्राथमिकता है अमर सेवा मंडल के अन्य समस्त महाविद्यालयों की तरह ही गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी का पूरी तरह समर्पित शिक्षक वर्ग अपने ज्ञान से नहीं अपितु अपने आचरण एवं व्यवहार से देश के तकनीकी भविष्य का निर्माण करने के लिए संकल्पबद्ध है विद्यार्थियों का भविष्य एवं सुरक्षा देखते हुए अमर सेवा मंडल द्वारा इन सभी महाविद्यालयों में सिर्फ पदवीधर विद्यार्थी ही नहीं चेतनाभिमुख ज्ञान संपन्न 
राष्ट्र के प्रहरी निर्माण किए जाते हैं एजुकेशन फॉर ऑल की संकल्पना के साथ में मेरे फादर स्वर्गीय गोविंदराव जी वंजारी इन्होंने कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय की स्थापना की डिसिप्लिन और अपने एकेडमिक्स के बलबूते पर विदर्भ के जाने माने महाविद्यालयों की पंक्ति में कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय का नाम शामिल हो गया कमला नेहरू महाविद्यालय के साथ साथ उसी के बुनियाद पर हमने इस संस्था का विस्तारीकरण किया हमने इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज की स्थापना की पॉलिटेक्निक कॉलेज शुरू किया हमने लॉ कॉलेज शुरू किया फार्मेसी कॉलेज की स्थापना की हमने एजुकेशन की स्थापना की एम बी जैसे कोर्सेज शुरू किए और उसका विस्तारीकरण के साथ साथ एक अच्छा एजुकेशन देने का प्रयास हमने अपने संस्था के माध्यम से किया है आज हमारे संस्था के सभी महाविद्यालय फिर चाहे वो एकेडमिक्स एक्टिविटी हो स्पोर्ट्स एंड कल्चर हो प्लेसमेंट हो इंडस्ट्रियल लिंकेजेस हो रिसर्च एक्टिविटीज़ हो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हो इन सभी मामलों की गतिविधियों में अग्रेसर है और एक अच्छा बेस्ट एजुकेशन देने का प्रयास हमारी संस्था के माध्यम से है मैं चाहता हूँ कि विदर्भ के विद्यार्थी इस महाविद्यालय में अपना प्रवेश लें और वो इस संधि का लाभ लें और मैं अपने संस्था की ओर से अपने माध्यम से विद्यार्थियों के उज्जवल भविष्य के लिए उनको शुभकामनाएं देता हूँ धन्यवाद गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ विधि संकाय का यह महाविद्यालय अपने प्रकार का एकमात्र माना जाता है भविष्य के कुशल अधिवक्ताओं के निर्माण हेतु डिबेट एसोसिएशन लीगल एड सेंटर तथा मूट कोर्ट जैसी रचनात्मक व्यवस्थाएं यहाँ की गई हैं। कम्युनिकेशन व्यक्तित्व विकास करियर गाइडेंस एवं अन्य विषयों पर मार्गदर्शन यहाँ की विशेष गतिविधियां हैं इसके साथ साथ ही पर्यावरण के प्रति सचेत समाज का निर्माण यह ध्येय समक्ष रखते हुए इन्वायरमेंट सेल यह गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ की विशिष्ट पहचान है शहर से लगकर ही शहर की आपाधापी से दूर स्थित कमला नेहरू कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मेसी अपनी अलग पहचान रखता है पूर्णतः नियोजित प्रयोगशालाएं सर्वोत्तम उपकरण अंतर्राष्ट्रीय शोध पत्र नवीनतम सीडी एवं किताबों से सज्ज लाइब्रेरी 24 घंटे इंटरनेट सुविधा यह समस्त आधुनिकतम सुविधाएं इस महाविद्यालय को विशेष बनाती हैं स्मिता वंजारी अमर सेवा मंडल इस संस्था की कोषाध्यक्षा हैं साथ ही संस्था के विद्यार्थियों के विकासाभिमुख समस्त प्रकल्पों में वे विशेष ध्यान देकर उन्हें नियंत्रित करती हैं साथ ही वुमन सेल के माध्यम से विद्यार्थियों के सर्वांगीण विकास कार्यक्रमों का नियोजन भी वे करती हैं In today's scenario of unemployment, it is moral responsibility of all educational institutions to develop the student for their employment as well as making them good entrepreneur. We mainly concentrate on our training and placement division to help our student to make their career in their respective area. Over the period of time, we have been associated with so many multinational companies like TCS, Wipro, Eureka, Forbes, Corny International, Infosys, HDFC, Mahindra and Mahindra, and other. We are looking forward to more industrial linkage for better exposure of the student. We have also signed up MOU with Huddersfield University UK, and also looking forward for more tie-up with international universities for exchange of education of our student. We hope that this kind of efforts of Vanjari Group will surely help students to make their career bright. यही नहीं, अमर सेवा मंडल की ओर से कामकाजी महिलाओं तथा विद्यार्थिनियों के लिए संपूर्ण आधुनिक सुविधाओं से युक्त कमला नेहरू गर्ल्स एवं वर्किंग वुमेन्स हॉस्टल अपने आप में एक विशेष उपलब्धि है संस्था के सक्करदरा स्थित कमला नेहरू गर्ल्स हॉस्टल व प्रियदर्शिनी गर्ल्स हॉस्टल में बाहर से आई हुई विद्यार्थिनियों के लिए अत्याधुनिक सुविधाओं की विशेष व्यवस्था है किताबी शिक्षा के अतिरिक्त विद्यार्थियों के व्यक्तित्व में निखार लाना शिक्षा का मूलभूत उद्देश्य है यह अमर सेवा मंडल की विचारधारा है इस दृष्टि से विभिन्न स्पर्धाओं का आयोजन प्राध्यापकों का विद्यार्थियों से विशेष आत्मिक संबंध एवं नवीनतम तकनीकी सुविधाओं की उपलब्धता यहाँ के महत्वपूर्ण पहलू हैं। जहाँ एक ओर शिक्षा का क्षेत्र व्यावसायिकता कृत्रिमता एवं औपचारिकता से बोझिल होता जा रहा है वहीं अपनी प्रामाणिक प्रतिबद्धता के साथ नैतिकता का पाठ पढ़ाने वाले अध्यापकों का निर्माण भी अमर सेवा मंडल कर रहा है गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ एजुकेशन के माध्यम से पढ़ाना यह मात्र किताबी ज्ञान को बांटने का काम नहीं 
बल्कि सर्वांगीण विकास के समस्त पहलुओं से विद्यार्थियों को अवगत कराना होता है इस आधार पर बी एड एम एड डी टी एड इन सभी पाठ्यक्रमों का अध्यापन नैसर्गिक सौंदर्य युक्त सौहार्द पूर्ण वातावरण में यहाँ होता है यह महाविद्यालय समाज के सशक्त प्रहरियों को निर्माण करने वाले शिक्षकों के निर्माण का कटिबद्ध स्रोत है विद्यादान सबसे बड़ी सेवा है और इसके साथ जब सामाजिक सेवा का अभियान जुड़ जाता है तब अमर सेवा मंडल जैसी संस्थाएं प्रेरक मार्गदर्शक बनकर समाज का देश का मार्गदर्शन करने के लिए आदर्श मानी जाती है यह बरगद यूं ही खिलता रहे जिसकी छाव में अन्य महत् कार्य फलते फूलते रहे यही समय की आवश्यकता है हौसला दिल में है साथ है ज्ञान हम समाज की देश की हौसला दिल में है साथ है ज्ञान हम समाज की देश की हर घर में ज्ञान का दीप जले शिक्षा के अंधेरे ना पले हर घर में ज्ञान का दीप जले शिक्षा के अंधेरे ना पले जीवन के लक्ष्य को पाने हम पढ़ते चले पढ़ते चले We redefine education. We move to build the nation. We redefine education. One sorry group of institutions. गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग समीर सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग वाक सर आई एम वेरी फाइन गुड मॉर्निंग समीर सर नाइस टू सी यू नाइस टू सी यू या या गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग समीर सर या या गुड मॉर्निंग वेरी नाइस टू सी यू sir we will be starting program very soon thank you sir good so how is condition in nagpur now badwaik sir how is it going in nagpur <laughs> little bit relaxation is there as per ah. as corona virus disease is concerned now okay. it, it shows the decreasing trend okay in the month of april last it was mm, a peak point mm. for nagpur correct at that time around 600 6000 to 700 nagpur district hmm hmm patient corona positive yeah yeah in the month from first may it goes on declining now it is below 2000 that is oh. good news for us yeah it's a definitely good news same in bombay in fact yeah yeah now only better part bombay is because our density is too thick hi Right. the population right. and despite that density number going down is right. a good uh, that is the main reason because of population density it spread very rapidly absolutely absolutely right so that we will overcome this worst situation yeah yeah we will for sure good kaise aap dehi kar sir my my ekdam badhiya sir आज कोविड ऐसी आकड़ा फार कमी है दोन हजार ट्रीप नागपुर कभी अरेन्ज करू शो प्रॉब्लम सो अदरवाइज टिल आई मीन 
first wave and it was a little relaxed. I made two trips to Nakul from uh, Jan Feb back to back. And suddenly this third wave is the second wave is holding us back. So hopefully should come to normalcy. We'll yeah, yeah. Shortly Abhijit Dada will join. Okay. Then we'll start inaugural function. Sure. So how do you manage to, this question is to walk, sir. How do you manage to make this as a pan-India national conference? It's commendable. <laughs> well, it is just like an impact of uh, Corona, like how it penetrates. <laughs> this is so it I becomes, mean. yeah, so Kamala Nehru conference become infectious that people will definitely be getting into all, onto it. It's, it's wonderful. Yes, when it is a matter of education and academics, Kamala Nehru Mahavidyalaya becomes infectious. <laughs> Correct. Very true. Very this, true. Is, this is our tradition. Yeah. Since last many years, we are doing this. This. And we, this is the typical period that yeah, yeah. April, May or something, you conduct this kind of... Oh, throughout the year. Okay. Physically, we conducted number of conferences. Okay. Due to pandemic, we are organizing online. Sami sir, you will be surprised that we have got almost representatives from each and every state of the country. Wonderful. Super. Yes. Right from Northeast also, sir. Yeah. So, yeah, he did mention Northeast. So, I am in touch with Dr. Harikumar Padatalka, who is a Chancellor of Manipur International University. I have put a, a request to him if he can join. But let us see. He's also very busy as far as... Okay. So you can imagine it's like a full action there in any case in education side and even the healthcare side. So he was very happy to note that uh, institution like Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya is taking this initiative where few of Northeast regional guys are also logging in today. Yeah. You see, because they are running a good PhD facility for, uh, you know, doing as a research support, research and development support. So, could open up good avenues there. I will be definitely putting you across to MIU in any case, yeah. eventually. But uh, this is a good working in so-called synergies as a pandemic effect. So, that's, that's good. So, Amir, sir, we have got participation from Aizol, oh. Arunachal Pradesh, Assam. Ah, yeah. oh. Yes. Very good. From there to Gujarat, from Jammu Kashmir to Tamil Nadu, every state. <laughs> the only thought that comes to my mind looking at this feedback is I think Kamla Nehru should spread wings in real sense and become Pan-India Educational Institute. Why not? Right, right. We will think in that direction, sir. Yeah. Because you people are doing really a good contribution. Thought process is very solid. Vision is very strong. And you see all these pictures which I see on the screen. I think each one of them is passionate in driving that vision that your institute has already. It's not your institute, our institute has already. So that something is very, very kind of inspirational for people like us who are the new entrant in Kamla Nehru and we are very happy to be a part of Kamla Nehru.
హలో బెడ్ వైక్ సార్ హలో హలో బోలా సార్ బోలా ఎస్ సార్ ప్లీజ్ అనౌన్స్ హౌ మచ్ టైమ్ ఇస్ దేర్ అగైన్ షార్ట్లీ గోయింగ్ టు స్టార్ట్ ఓకే ఓకే am i audible to all yeah yeah very well very well audible okay. yeah. thank you sir thank you so without any further late we are starting with our program so good morning one and all this is dr sarita tiwari on behalf of kamla nehru mahavidyalay i welcome you all in one day national conference on emerging trends of life science in view of current pandemic situation before starting i'll uh, request all the respected participants to mute their audio and turn off their video okay i hope everyone have got it i thank you all the participants for their prize time in such pandemic situation and contributing in this event now kamla nehru mahavidyalaya is the best among the top colleges of nagpur city our college name has been taken with respect for discipline by the excuse me please i request to mute their mic ma'am okay thank you so sorry for that kamla nehru mahavidyalaya is the best among the top colleges of nagpur city our college name has been taken with respect for discipline by the parents as well as by the academician this conference is an initiative to ponder over the new challenges in front of us due to globalization and current pandemic situation higher education institute needs to blend high value deliveries with modern learning tools to ensure that each institution should come up with different methods and technology that will benefit for human welfare in such pandemic situation focusing more on recent trends related to life science is the need of time the main objective of this conference is to discuss different aspect and involvement and development made by life science stream in mitigation of nuisance caused in this pandemic with this thought in mind kamla nehru mahavidyalaya decided to organize one day national conference on emerging trends of life science in view of current pandemic situation to equip participants with necessary skills set to adapt new transformation now before we start the inaugural session let me pay my homage to honorable late govind rao ji vanzari sir founder president of our seva mandal nagpur i also acknowledge i think we lost her voice is that so good week sir ma'am you are not audible yes so sir sarita you are not audible
करीता मैडम हेलो माइट बी नेटवर्क इश्यू ऑन हर साइड सर सी यस सर So she is there now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. There is an electrical uh, shutdown. Oh, All yeah. of a sudden. So sorry for that. So we see that. So I'll again start with that. So before we start the inaugural session, let me pay my homage to Honorable Late Govind Rao Ji Vanzari, so founder president of Amar Seva Mandal Nagpur. I also acknowledge the patronage of Honorable Dr. Suhasini Vanzari, Madam. President Amar Seva Mandal, Honorable MS, MLC Advocate Abhijit Ji Vanzari So, Secretary Amar Seva Mandal, and Honorable Dr. Smita Vanzari Madam, Treasurer Amar Seva Mandal, Nagpur. I have also got privilege to welcome Honorable MLC Advocate Abhijit Vanzari So, Secretary Amar Seva Mandal, who is also the President of this inaugural session. I am delighted to welcome Honorable Dr. Smita Vanzari, Madam, who is the Treasurer of Amar Seval Mandal and Organizing Secretary of today's conference. I also welcome Chief Guest and Inaugurator, Honorable Mr. Samir Joshi, so Founder and Chairman, I Transform Transgender Service Private Limited, Mumbai. Further, I extend a sincere welcome to Dr. Dilip Barwaik, sir, Principal Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya. I also welcome Vice Principal, sir, Dr. Pradeep Tahiko, sir, Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya. I also welcome two eminent experts and speaker of technical section, Dr. Jitendra Sharma, Program Management Officer, Chemicals and Health Branch, UN Environmental Program, Geneva, Switzerland, and another guest of technical section, Session, Dr. Ashish Bhargat, sir, senior scientist, CSIR IHBT, Himachal Pradesh. At the end, I welcome Dr. Shardul Bhag, sir, convener of today's conference. So let me welcome all distinguished guests for the inaugural session and technical session. I must also acknowledge the participants for their overwhelming response. I welcome all the academicians, research scholars, and students who have registered for this one day national conference across the country. Now, moving on to the next session. As light symbolizes victory over darkness and defeat ignorance, it marks the beginning of auspicious movement and event. Now, we will commence the inaugural session and I request Honorable MLC Advocate Abhijit Vanzari, sir, who is the president of the inaugural session to light the digital lamp by our auspicious hand. Digital lamp, please. <laughs> Shubham Guru Tvam Kalyanam Aarogyam Dhanasam Padah Shubham Guru Tvam Kalyanam Aarogyam Dhanasam Padah 
Okay. Thank you for the kickstart initiation. Now moving ahead, I request Dr. Shardul Bhag sir, convener of this conference, to give welcome address and put his convener speech. Over to you, Bhag sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarita. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the organizing committee, I, Dr. Shardul Bhag, welcomes all the resource persons, participants for attending this national conference on recent trends in life sciences in view of current pandemic situation, which is organized by all the Department of Life Sciences, Nehru Mahavidyalaya Nagpur. Honorable MLC Advocate Vanjari, sir, President of today's function, Chief Guest, Honorable Mr. Samir Joshi, Founder and Chairman, Transcendent Services Private Limited, Mumbai, Dr. Jitendra Sharma, and Dr. Ashish Vagar. Honorable uh, Dr. D.S. Uh, Badwaik, sir, Principal Kamla Nehru Mahavidyale, and Honorable Professor P.P. Dahikar, sir, Vice Principal Kamla Nehru Mahavidyale, and dear participants across the country. At the onset, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Shrimati Suhasini Vanjari, Madam, President of Amar Seva Manda Though Madam could not join us, but her blessings and best wishes are always with us. I offer my warm welcome to Honorable MLC Advocate Abhijit Vanjari, Sir, Secretary Amar Seva Mandal, and President of today's function. Despite his busy schedule, Sir is kind enough to spare time to grace the function. I would like to welcome Honorable Dr. Smita Vanjari, Madam, Treasurer Amar Seva Mandal, and who is the guest of honor of today's function. I offer my warm welcome to Mr. Samir Joshi, Founder and Chairman, iTransform Group, an initiative by Transcender Services Private Limited Mumbai for accepting our request to be the guest and keynote speaker for this function. I welcome our guest speakers, Dr. Jitendra Sharma and Dr. Ashish Vagat, being so kind enough to accept our request in such a short note. Ladies and gentlemen, since December 9, 2019, entire world is going through a big threat of new coronavirus and the disease which it causes is COVID-19, which has dominated the work of thousands of researchers in an unprecedented global effort. With this pandemic situation, entire system has been turned out to it at 180 degree. Like this novel coronavirus, novel working style and strategies have arises with no option. To understand the out outcome of this, over sorry, to understand the and overcome of this outbreak, the life sciences sector has played a major role amid this COVID-19 pandemic. To cope up with the global crisis, additional competitors partner to accelerate research and develop the fastest vaccine in the history. Governments, health system, payers, retail pharmacies, and non-profit agencies are now started working collaboratively with the sector to provide widespread distribution and administration of these things. With the introduction of this new normal, digitization is broadening the horizon of new possibilities in the life sciences sector, such as advanced analytics, automation, and cloud storage are collectively enabling scientific collaborations and increased productivity. Technical management has inter integrated in the R&D process through product and platform-centric technology and innovative collaborations to create efficiencies are the few examples that are leading to this unprecedented change supported by technological advancement. Although pharmaceutical innovation is saving the world, however, healthcare sector is another emerging field which creates tremendous opportunity for young professionals to sustain this forward momentum. In our outlook, we explore the various ways of COVID-19 accelerated changes within the sector, the changes that are likely to stay and what can be reimagined and made better today and tomorrow. It also explores different scenarios for the stakeholders to analyze how these changes can better transform the sector. We are expecting a strong discussion on recent findings and new emerging trends in the research from this national conference and also expected to provide an interactive platform to the researchers and the students. This will be a great opportunity for budding scientists, researchers, 
particularly in the regional area, to explore the new aspects of and global relations. Ladies and gentlemen, we have tre tremendous participations and representatives almost from every state of the country and having an opportunity to get benefited from Mr. Samir Zoshi, founder chairman, iTransform, Placenta Services Private Limited Mumbai, Dr. Jitendra Sharma, program management officer at UN Environment Program Geneva, and Dr. Ashish Vargat, senior scientist, CSIR Institute of Himalayan Bioresource Technology, Himachal Pradesh. At last, once again, as a convener of today's national conference, I welcome all the participants and dignitaries. Thank you so much. Over to you, Dr. Sarida. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving us the insight of the objectives of the conference. Now, moving on, I request respected principal, Dr. Barwaik, sir, to deliver an introductory remarks. Over to you, principal, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Very, very good morning, one and all. At outset, I would like to pay tribute to great visionary leader, let's say Govind Rauji Vanjari, founder president of Amar Sera Mandal. On the behalf of Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya, I, Dr. Dilip Badwai, principal of the college, extend a warm welcome to all the respected guests, academician, faculty members, research scholars and students on the occasion of inaugural function of National Conference on Emerging Trends of Life Sciences in the view of current pandemic situation. This national conference is jointly organized by Life Sciences Department of Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya in Nagpur. This inaugural function is presided over by Honorable MLC, Advocate Abhij Dada Vanjari, Sir, Secretary M.R. Mendal, Chief Guest and Keynote Speaker, and my good friend, Honorable Mr. Samir Joshi, Founder and CEO, I Transfer Mumbai. Guest of Honor, Honorable Dr. Smita Vanjari, Ma'am, Treasurer Amar Samandal, and Senate Member RTM Nagpur University, Nagpur. Other speaker for this national conference, Dr. Ashish Vargat, Senior Scientist, CSIR Institute of Himalayan Bioresource Technology, Himachal Pradesh. Other speaker, Mr. Jitendra Sharma, Program Manager, Office at UN Environment Program, Geneva. I feel proud to say about Jitendra Sharma. He is alumni of Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya Biotechnology Department. Vice Principal of our college, Pradeep Dahikar Sir, Convener Dr. Shardul Wong, Organizing Committee, all participants from different colleges across India. And my dear students, once again, I welcome you all with my words. Friends, we are facing unprecedented challenges due to COVID-19 pandemic. We had already faced coronavirus wave one, currently facing wave two. And as experts are discussing in the news channel and newspaper, in future, shortly, we have to face coronavirus wave three and four. Being responsible citizen, we have to obey the norms issued by the government and ICMR. So stay home, stay safe. Friends, don't be afraid of the worst situation. Find out the opportunities in them. It is rightly said that every bad situation is an opportunity to get stronger, better, and build ourselves up. We should take this pandemic as an opportunity to update ourselves, to overcome this worst ever situation and to fulfill academic thrust of the faculties, we have organized number of webinars on various topics. Recently, we have organized one week national level faculty development program on research methodology. Yesterday, we have already organized international webinar on stock market and investment and career opportunity. And today is national conference on emerging trends of life sciences in view of current pandemic situation. And few more conferences we are organizing in coming days. Thus, the pandemic situation provide us opportunities to attend online webinars sitting at the comfort of our home. 
this national conference on emerging trend of life sciences in view of current pandemic situation will provide an ideal platform and opportunities to share research ideas age cutting issues with eminent scientists academicians policy makers working in the field of life sciences during this pandemic situation as we are already aware we come across shortage of health care workers paramedic staffs and facilities too if we can equip life sciences students with additional applied skill such as medical lab technician operation theater technician dialysis technician ecg eeg technician and other health related issue then this shortage of paramedics can be overcome our kamla nehru mahavidyalay had already started one year diploma course in operation theater technician and dialysis technician the student from ug as well as pg along with their graduation and post graduation they can simultaneously do this one year certificate course and mr samir joshi is there to throw more light on this issue under the dynamic leadership of respected dr swasini vanjari madam president amar sewa mandal honorable mlc advocate abhijit vanjari sir secretary amar sewa mandal and honorable treasurer amar sewa mandal dr smita vanjari ma'am our kamla nehru mahavidyalay continues to attain new height as a result our college is re accredited a plus grade with cgpa 3.53 in its third cycle of re accreditation our college offers nine graduation courses 22 post graduation courses two post graduation diploma and six higher learning and research centers that includes physics chemistry electronics computer science commerce and english we are also having the junior college too from our research center around 30 students already registered for their phd program and many have been awarded phd degree from our kamla nehru center in the last 5 years we have published around 300 research papers in the journal of national and international reports we are imparting education to around 8000 students including junior college senior college pg and research we always try hard for the academic excellence and overall development of our students our college is also having international collaborations more than 800 participants have registered for this national conference we can see around more than 100 participants are on the zoom platform and around more than 100 participants are viewing this uh, streaming of, of this conference on the kamla neri youtube channel i hope all participants will be benefiting by the comprehensive and knowledgeable presentation of all renowned speakers wishing great success for this conference thank you thank you very much sir over to you ma'am thank thank you sir for your introductory remarks and introducing kamla nehru so nicely now dear participants today's inaugurator and chief guest is honorable mr sabir joshi sir who is founder and chairman i transform transgender service private limited mumbai i request mr sameer joshi sir to put few words and enlighten our participants over to you sameer sir thank you dr sarita madam thank you very much and uh, good afternoon good morning to all uh, dignitaries from kamla nehru mahavidyalaya college uh, this is a great day as a 15th may and i am humbled and i am very thankful for kamla nehru management team to make me participate in this forum in the capacity of the chief guest so kamla nehru mahavidyalaya i think i will first say two minutes on kamla nehru mahavidyalaya whom i am interacting for last now two two and a half years put together i think kamla nehru mahavidyalaya is one of the finest educational institute that i have come across and it operates out of this vidarbha region of maharashtra catering to over 6000 plus students who are the beneficiaries of this great educational institute 
Bensur doesn't just come great because of the infrastructures and the lab facilities, etc. The key forte or the key contributing factor for becoming an educational excellence is the clearly the leadership. And this is where I think we all must have heard of our previous speakers giving definitely as a salutation to all those senior management members, including all honorable Panjari family group members who are driving this educational institute in a nice way, where if you see when their vision, the way the vision has been articulated by this educational institute, where they're focusing in creating excellent and efficient professionals, responsible and sensible citizens, and kind and compassionate human beings. I think that's the crux of the, of the, of the institute, which is thriving the entire educational program to drive this as a vision, which is articulated by the management of Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya. Well, today, which is the day, which is the national conference day, the way Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya has fixed this day, on the backdrop, I would not put pandemic at present immediately, but on the backdrop of 12th May, where the whole world celebrated the International Nursing Day in the memory of none other than the respected Florence Nightingale, the nurse who invented the, the modern nursing. And that is a clear-cut indication and the intent of Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya, the way they have set up this platform today on 15th May with clear-cut focus in discussing, churning it out as a focus on what are those opportunities that very important stream like life sciences has on the backdrop of this pandemic where the whole world is passing through. Now, of course, when we are talking about pandemic, we all know that the world of this 21st century was never ready or was not even imagining this medical emergency that suddenly has bursted in December 2019 with the name that came out as COVID-19 pandemic the way we are living in this real present tense. For all of us, epidemic pandemic is not something we have not heard of. Rather, we have experienced this kind of epidemics and pandemics in the recent past also, something like Zika virus, which was there, something like Ebola, H1N1 swine flu, which hit around 2009, 2010. When I was in my schooling, we were really shaken up by the new virus and the new rather epidemic turned into pandemic that time, which was that AIDS, which was so dangerous that we are all that worried those times. This I'm talking about 1980s. That epidemic or pandemic is still persistent in few of our lives here as a, the society which is still scared of HIV as a virus, which created AIDS as a pandemic that time. For 20th century people, all of they really lived the worst ever pandemic, which is Spanish flu which also lasted for two, two and a half years, passed through those four waves and hit more than 500 million, one third of the world population in that time. As Badwaik sir said in his opening remark, even we are in the current second wave and it's like a sea. So we don't know whether it is third wave, fourth wave, how many waves we are going to pass through. And that's the reality when it comes to as a pandemic that we are all going to see ourselves and we are going to face it with a challenging courage. So when I'm going to give this thing as an inaugural speech spot, when Badwaik sir and Vaksar requested me to have this as a as an inaugural speech related to conference and, and uh, definitely the life sciences as a stream, I want to share basically this into two main, I would say, domains. The first domain where I would like to share some thoughts on the genesis of the pandemics, because this is all related to none other than the stream, which is uh, life sciences. And the second, of course, I'll put it more on a broad brush kind of a canvas, which is more on the opportunities that life sciences can see at a broader level, right? So when we talk about Genesis, we know that despite huge science and medical advances, the potential for disease to spread is increasing. And is the risk also of outbreaks escalating into epidemics and pandemics. Right, so the two core facts that I want to stay focused on these clear cut points is one is the occurrence of this pandemic, and second, why pandemic as a spread of the disease as a pandemic. So, what is the occurrence that why this kind of diseases are spreading? 
and why we are saying i mean it's it's not my personal opinion it's like researchers it's like medical practitioners corona virus or or covid 19 is just one wave i am not saying one wave literally as wave one wave two one three is just one pandemic we will all be witnessing maybe many more to come and we need to get geared up to make it more as a face with the readiness that we can come out with easy solutions as we move forward so this is where the occurrence of this disease is good to understand why it is happening if you see the trait some names which i took something like zika ebola h1n1 flu even if i cross y2k where we all witness y2k as a transition from last century to this century in y2k itself we all witness maybe four three four five as epidemics which were not that frequent pre y2k why so this is where this understanding as a life science students as a researchers is worthwhile taking as looking into the you know and then tablet our energies strategies and then look forward how we can be ready well in advance correct right? so this is where i thought i will share some rare view analysis so it's all thanks to researchers thanks to medical practitioners i would put as a extract of that analysis into three main causes why it is now and why it was not that have frequent in the past the first top three reasons are like this one is the pace of urbanization number two is climatic change and number three is the increased human and animal contact now dear students researchers and other expert members on the panel these are the three things which are relating our social today urbanization when we talk about the first fact if we take a century and journey from 1950 to 2050 as a projected journey 30 years from now in 1950 the population spread worldwide two third was in rural areas and one third was in urban areas but as a projection of united nations now when we move into 2050 the scenario is getting reversed we are going to see two thirds 66% are getting urbanized and balance villagers are left as empty pockets is it wrong is it right we are not into that moral discussions it is right because it's economic activity people are moving for their economic reasons and getting urbanization as a population which is a density i was just speaking in the morning i mean when we started this mumbai it's a spot as a land as a geography and what is the population in mumbai 2 crore plus that's the density we are talking about when we are talking about urbanizing and getting metro city as a development so more urbanization that puts more stress on the geography itself and natural resources in terms of housing sanitation health care what happens increasing number of people living in our crowded areas create living into unhygienic environments and where infectious diseases can thrive life sense students this is where is the area as a first cause as urbanization the second which i spoke is about climatic change we are all witnessing climatic change right the last news some sudden monsoon which is happening sudden rains coming in in monsoon there are no rains in few of the regions sudden flood landslides climatic change the 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 greenhouse effect the ever rising temperature which is creating that global warming process these are all the facts and these are all climatic imbalances which are happening my esteemed panelist which is going to be dr jitendra sharma he'll be talking more on environmental aspect when this comes to as a ecological balance so they are all again creating those environmental concerns which makes those infections diseases they can thrive and throw us as a more infections out who has estimated world health organization that by 2030 to 2050 due to climatic change it will kill another quarter of millions of people over as a normal death rate only because of spread of infectious diseases and mind you infectious diseases of tuberculosis and dengue this is what is that second reason where we are into the trap of those disease spreading as a epidemics and pandemics and the third and the most important reason what the research studies and the experts are talking about is increased 
human and animal contact of course when we are encroaching the habitats which are supposed to be animal habitats they are unexplored as a human life which can get as a comfortable there as a hygiene life it leads there are zoology students from life sciences the zoonotic diseases which are originated in animals and when that flea or that mosquito it leaves the barrier from that animal body to human body it creates that as a disease again and that's that condition which is called as the zoonotic disease condition so so these are the top 3 when we are talking about the causes that why this pandemics are happening it's it's all related to this major cause as a phenomenon students will understand all these three facts are nothing but the study and the understanding well of the life sciences how we can be more curative how can we be proactive how can we be researchers in getting into those zones so the second point which i want to discuss now is more about the two major aspects which i think can be good to explore and of course that when we live in a more elaborate discussion when the subject panel discussions will happen in the second half so the first opportunity is of course the research opportunity as a life science students i think that is i would say the green pasture one can think of of late all of us we know the institute of life science based out of bhubaneswar successfully established that in vitro culture of novel corona virus from patient samples using vero cells in vitro is out of body in vivo is within the organism that we know as a life science students right so there is a ample of opportunity especially those who are microbiology students can we get into this research mechanism and create more like those uh, studies those understandings those analysis where the drug formulations the formulations for vaccinations can become as a way of life in developing those in a faster way the second aspect when i talk about research is we are in the 21st century now where technology is on the driving seat and as shardul sir said in his inaugural inaugural uh, uh, speech also that technology angle will bring in more as a as a facet which will help some techniques something like natural language processing nlp what we call or optical character recognition ocr or in ai there is a deep learning machine learning so these all techniques if as a life science students you acquire as add on skills as a add on kind of a expertise that you can get into it becomes as a lethal combination where a life science students along with the technocrat mind can only help because these are all the facets of technology that help or or support the researchers to think like a human like intelligence so that helps reducing even the trial times the clinical trial times so the tat what they say the turn around time while devising the vaccination gets reduced if we implement a proper artificial intelligence based techniques to come out with the vaccination otherwise you know it more you are life science students is that creating a vaccination is not that short term process it takes lot of man hours it takes of lot of clinical trials as you pass from passport 1 passport 2 level 1 level 2 level 4 by the time vaccination is ready to consume by the human race so this is where this technology based research would help so this is first point as opportunity the second point as opportunity is the product development and when i refer product development yes be it a biochemistry line or be it a bio uh, technology line of course again the expert dr ashish wargat sir will speak more about when it's a biotechnology field but i am not referring product development only only from the drugs and the medicines perspective i am talking about product development also from the innovation but like sir spoke about wave 1 wave 2 what was the limitation of wave 1 in corona everybody create a hue and cry of supplying a ppe in quantities can we think of product development going forward as a innovation in those supplies as a life science students with your expertise as a basic understanding the life processes you know that's what is the basic life science as a student expertise will come out in the various domains as we know the subjects can we think of innovation that in the new opportunities life science students can drive in terms of those products proactively as simple as mask now see the kind of variants of masks which are coming out as a basic ppe if i use that word as a ppe but the opportunities could be like plethora oxygen cylinders that's a oxygen supply was yet another un cry or it's still at some spots it's a un cry in the second wave so what are we estimating in wave 3 can we envisage that and start thinking as a innovation what can be we ready when it comes to product development in those areas where 
the human will be supplied with those gadgets, those equipments using technological aspects, and we are ready to face bead wave three, bead wave. So I think these are some two thoughts as far as opportunities are concerned, which I thought I will submit at this point in time as an inaugural to set the platform moving ahead and definitely will be looking forward to have a more engaging when I touch upon along with my esteemed panelist member, we will go specific in working on and designing of those opportunities, which maybe are not known to you so far. Thank you very much and handing over back to the madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your kind, informative and elaborative talk on the uh, uh, current pandemic situation. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, moving on to next. Dear participants, we have with us president of today's conference, Honorable MLC Advocate Abhijit Zee Wanzari, sir, Secretary Amar Seva Mandal, to deliver his message to gatherings under whose able leadership Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya is propagating. I request so, to continue with his speech. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, today, Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya has organized uh, this emerging trends of life sciences in view of the current pandemic situation. Uh, yesterday, actually, there was a conference, international conference on stock market organized by Department of MBA of Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya. But due to some technical reasons, I could not uh, join yesterday's conference. So I say sorry for that. And uh, today we have organized this conference on the current pandemic situation. So the chief guest and keynote speaker who has just given his deliberation right now, uh, the CEO of iTransfer Mumbai, Honorable Mr. Samir Joshi, guest of honor, Dr. Smita Vanjari, who is treasurer of Amar Seva Mandal. Uh, another speaker is Dr. Ashish Varghat, senior scientist of CSIR, Himachal Pradesh, Mr. Jitendra Sharma from uh, UN Environment Program, New Delhi, and all other dignitaries and uh, principal of the college, Dr. Dilip Badwaik, sir. I am happy that Kamla Dhiru Mahavidale has organized this uh, conference on the current pandemic situation. We are going through a very bad phase since last one year. I am extremely pleased to welcome you all uh, on the one day national conference on emerging trends of life sciences in view of the current pandemic situation. Our Kamla Dhiru Mahavidale has rightly seize the golden opportunity to organize this stimulating national event in the times of pandemic. Our college is committed to provide quality education and promote research that will contribute to the development of our society. We feel elated and proud to have achieved significant milestones like uh, being identified as A plus grade uh, awarded by NAC. Uh, this spectacular journey has been impelling us all to achieve even greater heights in the years to come. The main topic of the National Level One Day Conference is Emerging Trends in Life Sciences, which is very useful for today's situation. And that will be useful for all researchers, all participants, or PG students, all UG students, or teaching faculty members. And the conference mainly focuses on recent trends in sciences to strengthen their applications in various domains of life sciences. It is the natural science that studies life, such as its physical structure, chemical process, molecular interaction, physiological mechanism, development and evolution. Despite the complexity of the sciences, certain unifying concepts consolidate it into a single coherent field that is life sciences. Emerging, un, uh, emerging recent trends in life sciences is remarkable and worthy for mankind as the treatment for preparing medicines for many diseases like corona uh, has become possible. Scientists from life sciences may put their best effort for inventing the medicines to cure such unwarranted uh, diseases like Corona, even though diseases will never completely be elim elim eliminated, but the life sciences industry will be able to diagnose them earlier through a combination of technologies and science and data. COVID-19 has fundamentally changed our personal and professional lives. Uh, as I already said, or, uh, earlier I said that uh, since last one year, we are going through a bad phase. Entire human being has been Excuse me, sir. Uh, kindly unmute yourself. Kindly unmute yourself, sir. Yes. COVID-19 has fundamentally changed our personal and professional lives. 
with the life sciences companies working from remote location workplaces are being reimagined from virtual work uh, spaces to new types of offsite collaborations life sciences companies are focusing more on individual needs of employees and promoting well being this growth is greater connectivity and blurred geographical boundaries is also widening the pool of talent and access to skills with the introduction of the new normal digitalization is broadening the horizon of new possibilities in the life sciences sector redefined workplace environments the shift in the healthcare delivery and innovative collaborations to create efficiencies are a few examples that are leading to the unprecedented change supported by technological advancements while pharmaceutical innovation is saving the world now is the opportunity for biopharma and medtech companies to sustain this forward momentum the life sciences sector has played a pivotal role amid the covid-19 pandemic situation to cope with the global crisis traditional competitors partners to accelerate accelerate research and develop the fastest novel vaccine in the history government health systems peers retail pharmacies and non profits are now working collaboratively with the sector to provide widespread distribution and administration so deliberation and participation in this conference will definitely help the uh, to create better alternatives to understand the research in the field of life sciences for all the participants like ug student pg student research students as well as faculty members so i appreciate the efforts taken by the department of life sciences of kamla nadu mahavidyalay for organizing this one day uh, national seminar on uh, pandemic situation i congratulate all of you i extend my best wishes to the uh, honorable shri samir joshi sir honorable all the resource persons who has uh, joined this conference for uh, giving their deliberations so once again i extend my best wishes thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you for your wonderful and thought provoking words we are blessed to have such pathfinder with us now uh, moving on to the end of the inaugural session ladies and gentlemen we are ending inaugural session of one day national conference on emerging trends of life science in view of current pandemic situation now i invite my colleague ms meenal devrekar to propose vote of thanks over to you meenal ma'am uh thank you ma'am am i audible yes ma'am you are audible uh so good morning uh, everyone it's my immense pleasure and proud privilege to propose a vote of thanks of this gracious inaugural function of national con level conference on emerging trends of life science in view of current pandemic situation at the outset i pay my humble homage to late shri govind rao anjali sir founder president of amar seva mandal nagpur i on behalf of kamla nehru mahavidyalay and entire organizing committee would like to thank our below president honorable dr suhasini banjari madam who is always a source of inspiration for us behind organizing such program i extend my gratitude to honorable advocate abhijit banjari sir member of legislative council of maharashtra state and secretary of amar seva man nagpur who has shown keen interest in academic activity as well as done a lot of activity for the welfare of teachers and students i am also thankful to honorable dr smita vanzari madam treasurer of amar seva mandal nagpur for her motivation and support i heartily thankful to uh, today's chief guest honorable mr samir joshi sir founder and ceo of i transform transgender services private limited mumbai and other keynote speakers who have given their valuable time and will share their views and knowledge with our participants i express my sincere thanks to the principal of our college dr badwaik sir and vice principal dr dahikar sir for their constant guidance and intellect also a big thanks to the convener dr shardul wak sir for all his efforts and being at front for organizing such event last but not in the list a big thanks to all the invitees for attending this inaugural function because without them this event would not be possible with the permission of chairman i would like to declare this inaugural function is over now we'll proceed with the keynote lecture now once again i express my heartfelt thanks to one and all 
uh, thank you. Now I would like to hand over the control to Dr. Sarita Tiwari, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for proposing vote of thanks. Now, as we have ended with the inaugural session, uh, now we are starting with the next session, that is our keynote address. And today we have with us eminent expert to whom we are going to listen in short time. And we have already introduced with him. So before that, I'll introduce our participants with, with the guest and speaker of keynote speech, uh, Mr. Samir Joshi, founder and chairman, Transgender Service Private Limited. With an engineering degree and post-graduation in business management, Samir Sir has more than 27 years of cross-continental industry work experience across India, Asia, Europe, and North America. He was honored with the award of India's most trusted CEO in May 2017 in education industry by World Council and Research Corporation, Singapore. His startup venture, TSPL, has been successfully delivering unique and innovative educational programs in school students and college youth since its inception from the year 2017. The only focus in conceptualizing such program is to bring transformation in today's young people to make themselves sustainable and is offered under company brand iTransform. iTransform school program Explorium used exper experiential learning methodology to promote innovation and creative thinking of students was listed in top 100 ED Tech innovations by ED Power of Ideas in February 2019. I transform Paramedic Center, the institute that skills today's youth to make them job ready for healthcare industry was conferred with Maharashtra Startup 2020 Award. To combat the current skilled manpower crisis of this pandemic, iTransform launched recently COVID care expert program that received a special applause from government of Maharashtra. While iTransform group is now operational across Maharashtra, Sami sir is also engaged in his advisory roles for various well-known organizations like Europe India Foundation for Excellence, Brussels, India Institute of Public Health, Gandhinagar, and recently he has been inducted by government of Maharashtra as one of the nine select members of the expert committee for the proposed Maharashtra State Skills University. With this short intro, I request Mr. Samir Joshi, sir, to initiate with his lecture. Over to you, Samir, sir. Thank you, Sarita, madam, for uh, Thank you, sir. Introduction. appreciate truly. Uh, I am able to share my screen, right, Waxer? Because I will. Yes, sir. You can. You can. I can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So I hope you are all able to see the screen which I am sharing. Yes, the screen is visible, sir. Great. So good afternoon once again to all respected members from Kamala Nehru Mahavidyala College. Uh, my co-panelists. Shri uh, Dr. Jitendra Sharmaji and Dr. Ashish Vargat sir also. And of course, one and all, all the participants on the call today, the students, we have logged in from various states from our country, the research scholars, the industry representation and so on. Uh, while the topic that we are going to discuss today is about the opportunities that health sciences stream can see on the backdrop of current pandemic. I'll spend a minute before I really get ahead on the session about the introductory note which was shared by the madam about I transform. So it's a I transform is a thought process where we engage with today's youth to bring in their domain experts as well as the human skill experts to make them self-sustainable into their as a progressing career. It's an initiative of our company which is registered as Transcender Services Private Limited. And you can surf our details on our website, which is www.itransformindia.com. We are basically operational into main three verticals, which are related to education, healthcare, and technology. We started this our journey way back in October 2017. So this October, we'll be completing four years. 
and very happy to see that in this four years, almost one and a half to two years, we'll be working under current uncertain pandemic situation, which is COVID-19 that we are into. So while I take this as opportunity now to share some good careers or good opportunities where students, the fraternity from life sciences can look up to as the initiatives that, that they can pursue. I would like to first share with this. This is something what we are going to discuss that COVID life, really how it is when it comes to career. And I have just added one trick where I have just added that as a COVID life after the vaccination that we are into. So the phase that, that we are really talking about as the life sciences, what it takes, what it will be. So while I will limit myself right now as to give you the broad brush about the three, four, five aspects where you can explore those opportunities that are knocking as far as the, the post-corona or the post-vaccination phase that we are into and the new opportunities are coming up. Of course, with our eminent panel members, which I have my co-panelists, where they will be more focusing on, say, their expertise on the environmental side and the biotechnology side. So these two or a couple of, I will not be touching in detail very much. Right. So what is it as a life science? So before we get into what is new, I thought, let me share what we know as a life science, all of us put together, right? So basically the coverage of anything and everything related to living organisms, right? And it covers topics like biology, biochemistry, food science, biotechnology, so on and so forth. Careers, these are the standard domains that typically students are pursuing, where they get into MPhil, PhD, when they get into the master's program, or they also enroll into some MBA, MSc kind of a further career, including the research studies. And the jobs that they typically pick up are in this domain functionality. So that's something. And I'm saying there could be some exceptions. There could be some other tracks. But one has to say that when it's a life science, this is the framework that we are into. Recently, in fact, some changes. If I would put it to COVID area, but recently there was a news that while entrance exams are done on a specific college-based mode, where it's a BSc life science as an admission process, maybe need scores examination which is there. So National Testing Agency has voiced that the NEET score also can be considered when somebody has to get enrollment into the BSc Life Science as a program. This is just as a news. So facts, figures, I think we'll have to keep waiting because as is, again, when I say post-COVID science or post-COVID life science, the NEET exam as a itself is like a question mark. When? Was it from April to 1st August or now is it from 1st August to some other date that is going to get flash soon, just as to, you know, leverage that as what is after post-corona when it comes to life sciences. So, so with this as a basic where we are on today, I'm going to now share with you some four good opportunities that you as a life science students, be it undergraduate, be it postgraduate, what you can take it as a career. So when I now portray as a life science, as a UGPG student, I think this is a picture that comes to my mind. I hope you are seeing my full slides screen. So the options that you see on those multiple roads that you have ahead, and I'm saying those dancing images of those students are like, can I do post-graduation something where I can pursue further than the research studies or some other aspects? Can I do some courses parallel? Is there any job which is I can take up immediately or most of you, the many of you will be only on the question mark as a zone. Really, what should I do after, after, after life sciences degree or a post-graduation, which is there? So these are some three, four kind of reading your mind are the banners or the, uh, you know, the road signages, which I have kept as a roadmap that you are exploring too. And mind you, we are going to touch each and every aspect of these roadmaps, right? And that's what, where I thought I will deliver this as a, as a conversation with you on, on today's important National Conference Day. So let's start with the first journey. What about public health? Is that the roadmap? This is one of the biggest opportunity which is there now getting redrafted. It's reimagined. So if you see the word cloud on the right-hand side of the screen, what it connects to? Environmental hazards, vaccinations, you know, then non-communicable diseases. It's not only communicable, which is the coronavirus that we are into right now. Non-communicable diseases as well. Environment again, occupational health, 
so these are some spots where this public health is sitting what is public health anything and everything to do with the community well being community health aspects in from the policy making perspective so if we go back to the explanation zone on the left hand side anything and everything which is to do with the health promotion of the community surveillance and monitoring in corona one of the fields and corona is a kick off as i said in my previous opening remarks this pandemic may not be the end of it as the second wave ho gaya we have taken one two doses we are back to normal no guys it's not going to happen that way it could be third wave and it could be new another infection that may be on the way because of those three reasons which i spoke so one of the facts which has come out so solidly right now is a contact tracing could that be a good arena to consider because this is where we are lagging today as to control today even the count is 3.5 lakhs plus infections which are coming at a national level of course maharashtra number where i come from has come down from a lakh plus to now 46 45 000 zone and city where i belong to which is mumbai has come down from 12000 to 2000 but one of the lacunas or a shortcomings that we all are understanding is we were not that good in terms of capability in managing the contact tracing by itself as a capability to handle this as a controlling mechanism is that a good opportunity monitoring same analysis disease pro protection prevention communication tools so on and so forth so if i largely define what is public health as a opportunity that is really giving a good platform to pursue and especially when your platform that you are already on a strong foundation is a health science where the subjects that we just saw we know that this is where we are expert at so preventing disease and prolonging life and organization of service that is something which is a public health now when we did a research since me being connected in this field as a as a connect with various organizations institutes this public health tree has got branches where the students are coming in from and if you see broad brush it is mainly from medical side and very few really come from life science science which is you can see those circles microbiology biochemistry biosciences so there is a ample scope which you being on the life science side can pursue public health as your career going forward who is public health management professional i thought it is it is pertinent good enough to share this aspect with you because you should know after doing my graduation or even if i am in the post graduation in msc doing maybe uh, life sciences what is opportunity where i can get shift into this as a stream so there are three clear cut domains the first domain is working in healthcare sector itself who can be in the phone phone karun ke nahi karun thoda so so there could be two kind of profession mm-hmm. is a medical which we all clearly understand as a meaning medical nurses doctors and second is a non medical which i will touch upon the second is who are trained in the hospital management or the administration programs there and third where you can explore is something like pursuing a post graduation the first road banner which i was put up there which is masters of public health indian public health of uh, institute pfhi which is having its five state wide institute something like indian institute of public health that's something which is available tis is yet another organization where you can do something like this masters of public health as your expertise that you can pursue after basic life sciences as your expertise why public health managers are required now in india when it's a pandemic situation so let's not get into all the four boxes even if i keep one box which is in front of you current shortage of health workers badwaik sir was speaking about it right in his open opening remark current shortage of health workers is putting tremendous strain and all of us we are aware of this as a fact nsdc national skill development of corporation has projected a shortage of 8 lakhs 8 lakhs is a number and pandemic is adding something like a fuel to the fire as a shortage is right so this is the critical aspect where more experts more skilled as a professionals are required to join this as a vertical as a public health vertical what do you learn in this public health as a subject so it's something to do with the epidemiology which is again a straight connect from your as a as a life science as a base biostatistics national health programs which is infection 
They said, I'll spend one minute here as to uh, enlighten you on this CD and NCD. Infectious disease is we categorize as a communicable disease, which we are into right now, which is you pass on to it immediately. And that's how, in fact, from small disease spot, like something happened in Wuhan in December 2019, and in May 2021, it is created as a pandemic because it got transferred so fast. And that is the thing which is called as a communicable disease. The other domain is a NCD, non-communicable disease. Now, why I want to differentiate these two for your enlightenment, as you need to know is, till pandemic hit us badly, okay, we were in the healthcare side, we were focusing more on NCD, because we know TB, diarrhea, these are the things which are, these are diseases which are already much in control by vaccines which are available and medication which is available. So the whole focus was there on this non-communicable diseases, that is diseases which are rampant even today, they even exist today in society because of our lifestyle diseases. So today, if you see the diabetic conditions of the people are quite on increase, hypertension, or what we say is a blood pressure is on increase, mental stress, and that's why the depression increase. These are the diseases they come because if I'm a diabetic, it's not that it's a communicable to somebody else, my brother, sister, wife, or son or daughter, he, this disease will get transferred to him because I'm diabetic. It's not a communicable disease. So that is non-communicable disease. So this is where the whole healthcare infrastructure was completely engaged. Why sudden stress or, or that struggle came on infrastructure of healthcare when Corona hit us badly? Because that readiness to handle the infectious diseases. And this is where is the need where we also need to have focus on infectious diseases considering it's not going to stop only after wave two. It's not going to stop as a corona after wave three and wave four, but there could be more infectious disease may emerge because of those three reasons that, that will come up. But at the same time, we also need to take care of patients with cardiac issues, patients with sugar level, patients with hypertension, blood pressure, etc. And this is where this shortage of manpower is still existing. And these subjects will be taught to you. Of course, management subjects, because you are going to do the master's program. And of course, more strategic subjects, which is like health policy, financial management, economics, health insurance, and laws and legalities of the med medical legal is a very, very specialized line and has to have expertise to get into this kind of scenario. And the scope is enormous, public health. And these are the some spots which I have just selected, something like state, central, city level, those with medical or paramedical backgrounds, uh, the state semi-governments, CSR organizations, UNDP, WHO, teaching research organization, NGO for public health. It's like widespread, even in the organizations which are international organizations working in India, the CARE Foundation and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So hospitals of various types, it could be government, corporate NGOs, wherever you are staying, it could be that job which is available in those healthcare organizations, healthcare insurance companies as TPAs, we all have come across those TPAs when somebody of us was admitted in the hospital and there is a huge team of third party assurance which are working in the hospitals. And of course, after working consistently for a good three, four, five years, there could be a scope which you will be getting into the international assignment. So if I put a banner again that where could be the public uh, as a healthcare opportunities on the international footprint. It could be UNICEF, WHO, UNDP, or at a national level, we have our NHM National Health Mission, where every zonal of his districts of his state offices are there, where students are typically are employed to work in the policy matters. So this is that the first kind of a, a, a sort of a opportunity, which I thought is very, very open and is available, especially because your platform and the foundation is much better than just as a BSc or a BCom student, but more like a health or a, more like a life science students. In fact, if you look at 2017 NHP, National Health Policy, there are two clear cut points. One is specialized management skill is what they have echoed that this is required. And second is in the domain of public health management cadre. So these are those good notes because this was drafted way before the pandemic was seen, which I'm talking about NHP 2017, and it is valid and enforced in such a relevance when it comes to 
post pandemic as a situation so this is the first drive which i want to share with you my dear students the second is the healthcare industry now pandemic has taught us various lessons right it's it's a clear cut no more it's like roti kapda makan are the basic needs of human of course it's a added joke roti kapda makan or wifi that is something as a need of the human but pandemic has really shown as a concern roti kapda makan to your benefit wifi and of course for everybody benefits healthcare indeed health is wealth is what we have learned in this pandemic indeed we know health is the only way where jaan hai to jahan hai is what we learned in this pandemic and that's the reason you being as a healthcare profession this becomes as a really solid opportunity to hone some future skills that will get closer to the job because in fact post pandemic healthcare industry and especially organized healthcare is going to be like a huge it is projected to grow in double digits as a year on year in in the business community language it is called as a compounded annual growth rate cagr so it is going to grow more than 12% year on year as a robust industry growth right so this is something spot which i am going to share with you badwaik sir has already shared something to do with as what is that opportunity so when we say healthcare typically anybody and everybody in the society connotes that with two professionals in healthcare it's doctors or it's nurses but what about these people who are working in healthcare and as picture suggests none of them are doctors and none of them are nurses so who are they this is the field students which i am wanting to share with you as a great opportunity which is just opening our door and me being as one of the institutes where we are running these programs is a witnessing the way the industry is hungry to employ people hungry is not the word the it, it's like it's like famine which is there for trained manpower in the industry to work in this domain so somebody who is picking up the the vein and taking the blood out you must have seen this experience this when you have gone for a blood test somebody who is analyzing your blood samples in the laboratory the pathology a person who is testing and analyzing and creating the report for pathologist to sign as a md pathologist to sign the report somebody who has donated in the blood bank and created those blood pouches to be delivered into the blood bank for emergency in operation theater somebody is just taking some x ray or a ct for a patient to take the scanning somebody is working in operation theater to assist surgeon or anesthetist to do a successful surgery or somebody is just supporting a patient to undertake a good dialysis operation which are these people who are they they are none other than parallel to medical the paramedic workforce and the critical role here for paramedic is to handle latest technology which is there in medical industry on one side so they are technologist and to manage patient or a human interface with the right compassion attitude to undergo that as a treatment and that's the dual responsibility with which this paramedic is working in the current scenario and many more paramedic are required in the healthcare industry as i said pandemic has just fueled the requirement in multifold types which are those as the skills that we are talking about the first picture which i saw was of the technical medical word for that is a phlebotomist the person who draws the blood when you can see on the right patch of the screen hamare wo arm se sui dal ke wo collect karta hai blood sample this is the role of phlebotomist that's the profession which but if i transfer it to pandemic situation then the role changes to vaccinator what we are doing in our phlebotomy program is now we are also teaching them i am intramuscular injection so phlebotomy is kya karta hai he will take the blood by doing this incision into the vein while well, vaccinator does the intramuscular injection to push the vaccine into your muscles and there is a huge demand for this students as a vaccination as a vaccinator see as a process today india is at a cusp level where out of 130 crore which is our population 
not even 12 crore have passed into the vaccination as of now. So we have 40 crores, 50 crores minimum to complete the vaccination process. And if we are swapping as a population, including the young people, I think it's like minimum 80 to 90 crores of vaccinations yet to go. Today, in our institute, when somebody is undergoing phlebotomy program, the recruitment is 100% as a vaccinator that they are called to do this job, earning easily anywhere between 15,000 to 30,000 as a per month salary. This is that job as a vaccinator. The next is this radiography skill, which is the first test after blood test that the person does when it's a COVID. They undergo X-ray or they undergo CT or HRCT, right? This is the technique which is on most demand today in the medical industry, which is radiology skill, where they undergo X-ray scanning, CT scanning, and undergo this as a medical. So the best skill is to read that imaging report and convert that into medical language. I think that's the technique which is on the most demand. Today in Mumbai, when there was a first mobile van which was launched to do X-ray signing, I transformed student was the first student who was hired to board the van and she was none other than our, our one of the girl students. X-ray as an expertise, huge demand. You guys are undergoing already the basic life sciences as a procedures and the systems of human as anatomy and physiology. You will undergo this kind of programs very fast as an immediate understanding what to do as a medical expertise in such kind of programs. The next, see any virus, any virus where it emanates from, it's a cell. It's a cell culture end of the day. And then the tissue culture. So anything and everything to do with the histopathology is yet another huge demand which is shaping up in the healthcare industry. So handling and processing of the tissue specimen and, and, and going ahead with the staining procedures is the skill set. This is a live photograph from a histopathology as a function. And Dr. Ranita Borges is a big name when it comes to histotechnology as an expertise in India, in our country. Huge demand when somebody has to undergo this as a good technologist program. You can see they are doing sampling testing of the tissue culture. What we do is a malignancy test as a first test for even the, any detection of any malignancy and see the machinery which is installed in that as a department to work in. So again, on one side technology and on the other side the human interface. That's what is the skill set that we are looking at when it's a histotechnician or a histotechnologist as a job. Yet another, I was talking about non-communicable diseases, mental depression, tensions, right? So yet another program which is in huge demand, especially under NCD, as a experts which are required, is this EEG, EMG. These are all medical terminology students. Electroencephalography and electromyography. There are main three tests. Condition of the brain with use of electrodes and understanding how it functions. That is the first part as a technician or a technologist job. Second is conditioning of the muscles. How are they working? So doing nerve conduct under EMG electromyography as a second as a papillary. And third is whether muscle to the nerve is going in the right way as a brain spot. And that's where the nerve turn. So I have shared actually the photographs from the working labs. See the lady who is there, electrodes are put on her skull and this technologist is actually observing how the brain is functioning by using those electric pulses. Here is the nerve conduct to understand how the muscular order or a disorder, the way the condition of muscles connecting with the brain is there and understanding again on the machine, if you see the graph, something on her computer screen. So these are the important job roles are opening up in healthcare for especially where the students can come from the life science as their basic background. Again, in the communicable disease, non-communicable diseases, one of the basic problem which we are analyzing is the disease, which is anything and everything related to cardiac care. How many cases have you heard of that he just passed away by having a cardiac arrest? Are, usko heart attack a gaya. What was his age? What was her age? Was he old enough to die with the, with the impact of cardiac arrest? And this is where this particular manpower, where it is really increasing as the cases, and there is no manpower to support eminent doctors, cardiologists, to use technology. Again, see, there is a technology at the top, and there is a patient on the operation theater bed. 
So these are the new jobs, which is a cath lab technologist, are opening up to work in the cath lab, which is one of the finest application in any hospital where a trained person can be employed on immediate basis. When I connect it with the COVID cases, and you are, you are hearing the news is that infection is increasing, but mortality is down. But the deaths which are happening are with the comorbidity. These two pictures I have put. One is a cath lab, and second is a dialysis. The fatality or the mortality which we are seeing is increasing is with the people who suffer from those two main diseases, and also have COVID as a as an infection. This is where they become more vulnerable. This is where the admissions are increasing, and this is where manpower shortage is visibly seen as a non-existent. So can you think of becoming a good dialysis expert technologist? See again the lady who is operating a dialyzer, which is a machine, a technology, and there is a patient who is undergoing dialysis. So these points which are there, they are more technical words. I'm not here to explain you the individual skills. I'm first giving you the broad brush. Where is it when it comes to healthcare, as the doors are open for life science students to explore plethora of opportunity which we have never thought of, in our standard no knowledge book that we know when it's a when it's a life science as a career career as a post graduation or whatever are the courses and as the jobs related to the syllabus so this is where students i want you to stay focused what is that healthcare which is knocking off your as a good opportunities now one of the recent application in covid straight right in my introduction when when uh, madam introduced me as one of our initiatives what applauded by the state government of maharashtra now here is the shortage of the healthcare workers and this job is best suited for you as a health science students our next batch is going to get launched on 25th of may to create covid expert whichever part country you are in you can enroll in this program and just undergo this expertise this is a fast track program especially for people who come from paramedic side or even the basic life science side you can enroll in this program and can get expertise wherever you are in hyderabad you are in northeast of india you are in tamil nadu you are in jammu kashmir undergo this training and become your expert as your own as a covid care expert to serve in the community in nearby covid care covid centers or any hospital who is having as a as a covid ward where you can get trained it's a seven days program five days online and this is receiving as a best best response from the industry you being basic life science as a graduate or a post graduate you will qualify just to undergo this as a training as a rapid fire training what we have so we started on 24th april our current batch is going on it will be out by 17th of may and our next batch will start on 25th of may so this something innovation which we brought out as to look at what best we can serve community looking at as a backdrop of either paramedic or a profession or a life science as expertise that you carry so this all patch is about doing healthcare as a profession by undergoing some extra courses extra skill development and equipping yourself to do this manual healthcare work to deal with technology and to deal with the patients on the other side after this there is a third opportunity so first what we spoke is about more on the public health side the second what we are speaking is more on the healthcare industry side which i said is organized healthcare industry and there are plethora of options that are available to undergo this as a parallel to medical paramedic as a skill development that you can think and latest of is as a shortest as covid care expert or that phlebotomy is come vaccinator now the other thing which i want to share with you is this digital thing that is that is up today and as i said in the in the opening session also when we inaugurated this platform 21st century you can't live without technology technology is inseparable right that's what our way of life is as i said roti kapda makan one of the things which we are realizing for last good 3 4 5 years is a wifi we become restless the moment the wifi is down we saw the technology is as a imbalance today on the call when the network is low we are not able to connect and the best part of the technology is i am talking to you today sitting in mumbai and connecting all india people on one call on one platform which is a zoom which is a technology 
So we are all well conversed when it comes to technology. And this slide, what you are saying, is just the pictorial way where the digital health is going and where you as a life skill or you as a life science student can connect fast if you take some additional skill, something like AI, which I spoke about earlier, something like IoT, Internet of Things, or something like analytics, which I think Shardul sir spoke about it in the data analytics in his opening patch. These are some few indicative as additional skills in technology domain if you undergo. And there are plethora of programs which are available. Even we run our own technology platforms where you can get trained in any of these programs that you wish. But there are various online, there are various institutes where you can go to your nearby kind of uh, programming institutes where you will uh, undergo this as an additional skill as you pursue your, pursue your life sciences. So where the digital health is, you just see those mnemonic mobile health. All of us, we are very aware of Arugya Setu app, which is there in almost the number which flashes around 18 crore people have already Arugya Setu as an application there. How many of you really use those wearables? When I go in the morning for a jog, I have my that wristwatch, which counts my heart rate. When I take a walk and I climb up my six-story floor, where I come to the sixth floor, the app actually calculates how many steps I have taken to reach my home. This is all sensor-based. When we talk about IoT or AI, the machine learning or deep learning that we are talking about. In hospitals, when we are talking about analytics, there is a clear-cut indication that when a patient gets into the OPD, outpatient department, to submit his form to seek a medical practitioner's appointment, and suppose he is ill and he is admitted, he is operated, he is now stayed in the hospital for a while, and then he is discharged. So from OPD, as a income to the incoming hospital, till he discharged, maybe by 7, 8, 10 days, he stayed in the hospital and discharged, there are various data points that get captured at various functions in the hospital. And this is where the big data that comes into measurement to understand the psyche of the patient. As I said, this artificial intelligence helps and it works like a human intelligence and it creates predictive diagnosis as a tool. And this is where this digital health is going ahead as a new pasture that is opening up in this era of 21st century you as a healthcare or you as a uh, uh, as a uh, health science students, if you take this as an additional bit on your head, see, guys, the opportunities I'm showing are some spots. It's not that each one of you should join public health. Each one of you should take paramedic. Each one of you should look at some technology. But there are some brains here in this life science stream where they are very experts in managing technology. There are some brains here which are keen in getting into this really healthcare sector as a working by acquiring some skills where their passion is. So microbiology guy may say, okay, let me undergo the pathology as a technician, as a technological aspect. So this is where I'm giving you more and more opportunities to see where you can explore, where you can think, where you can go really bound the boundaries. So when it's a digital health, it connects you to directly the next plethora as a good option where we are talking about telemedicine. Today, when there is a pandemic, you know whether we are meeting doctors in person in their consulting or it's happening as a telemedicine. It is happening as a teleconsultation. It is happening as a video conferencing with the doctors. How the pharmacies are delivering. How these new avenues are opening up and you being at the base as a life science students who are taking some subjects which become as a ready platform for you to hone some additional skills to enter this as a green pastures to get ahead in the more opening up opportunities which are there. Just see this graph of telemedicine market in India. Forget about the dollar value. I will only say from 2020 forecast, which are just last year when we finished to this year, to five years down the line, it's a five times growth that has been expected when it comes to telemedicine as a market size. So these are the avenues which are available as a life science students where you can think, and as I said, we know what life science is, but maybe we were not too sure whether these are the areas, these are the pastures. There are many more, as I said. So one of the panelists will be speaking on environmental side. One of the panelists will be speaking on biotech, biosciences, bioresourcing. 
these are the spots which you should think which is opening up thanks to pandemic so worst case pandemic is because people are suffering but the best part is there are new opportunities with young people like you will explore to get ahead to pursue this as your career path that one can think of is that enough no that is not enough this is something which i would insist as as a young as a young mind as a as a people who can really bring in change and instead of pursuing always a dream ki main job kahan karna chahta hu where do i seek a job instead of becoming a job seeker can you think of becoming a job giver by you yourself owning the skill as a entrepreneur what is entrepreneur you identify an opportunity where there is a concern where there is a social concern come out with some innovation address that problem with the solution that you can bring it and create that as your economic value to the product or the service that you will offer to the market that's what the entrepreneurship is and this is where your those two combinations one is your life science as a subject matter expertise and second is maybe taking some technological bent of mind including iot maybe internet of things what is iot chip enabled technology is a sensor based technology so there are various sensors like voice sensor light sensor temperature sensor use those because once you undertake this as a skill development program for yourself you will try to connect those dots and you will create something new which was not seen by the people around and this is where i am saying entrepreneurship which is nothing but again uh, honorable uh, vanzari sir abhijit dada has said about medtech or a meditech what they say as a startup platform students researchers india is the best platform today as a exciting environment as a ecosystem where there is a lot of buoyancy force as a startup world where a lot of startups are working one of the domains where i transform was already connected was ed tech as a startup which is educational technology yet another space which is solid in boom is a fintech startup financial domain as a technologies where all those uh, you can say the on uh, payment on way gates you know online transactions these are all nothing but the financial the blockchain which is the latest in the bucket which is happening right so these are all fintech as a space and for you as a life science students medical technology or a med tech that's something which is really as a green pasture that you can think of to explore those who are really want to get to on their own as a future entrepreneurs from as outcome of this call i i really thank kamla nehru mahavidyalaya to set up this platform at a right time in the midst of pandemic where young people like you the scholars like you the drivers like you can think to acquire technological capabilities use your best knowledge of life science and really enter into the startup space of medtech like some of the examples which you can see on the screen pick up anyone the first name itself strand life sciences what they have done they use genomic profiling based next generation sequencing ngs what they call as a technology to improve care of cancer so they really attack that non communicable disease of cancer and created this as their value offering to the market another tricog cloud connected ecg system which helps to detect heart complications another thing which is related to heart see where they are focusing on healthcare the most demanding as a field where there is a lot to do look at yet another uh, the dozy the contactless patient monitoring ai based the tri aging system right go to this pandorum technologies the last one the biotechnology startup with a distinct synergy of life science and engineering it's like you know the way new education is talking about the interdisciplinary there is a life science as a base and i have taken something more on the engineering i think uh, one of my good panelist member who is on the call who would be speaking more on the biotechnology aspect or bio engineering aspect but he was focusing this pandorum is focusing on tissue engineering the big stuff today when it comes to as a post pandemic area right so this is the platform that we are talking about when it comes to 
as a pandemic areas where you can start looking at opportunities guys and create your uh, own ways as to go so with this i come to my last slide when it comes to connecting new opportunities for life sciences the new avenues for life sciences what you need to do on the backdrop of pandemic is you only need to think think out of the box think out of the box don't get into in box as what i know about life sciences think what you don't know about life sciences where you can connect yourself to and then there is world is like world of opportunities sky is not the limit it's only your imagination it's only your passion it's only your drive to go ahead on any of these boxes that we have discussed so far it could be research it could be product development it could be public health it could be paramedics or it could be startup environment which is the most promising land today for young people like you to create some solution to perennial problem that we are facing and this pandemic should drive this as the spots to create new opportunities when it comes to life science as a stream with this i end my my dialogue with you at this point in time it's it's on 1 pm because i think one hour was allowed. and i hand over back to the convener of this as a as a session plan back to you madam if any questions i will i will leave the platform open for you all thank you sir thank you for your uh, such informative and elaborative lecture and the highlights that you have focused on the covid life after the medicine and you have also highlighted what students can do after they pursue their uh, pg and ug in life sciences and also what's the need for public health managers in india and in the end the main focus was on the logo jaan hai to jahan hai thank you sir for enlightening our participants thank if you. any participants has question they can ask sir or they can write it in chat box sure we have we can entertain few questions because uh, sure, right now sure. we will continue with the technical session sure. anyone Anyone can have open platform to speak. I think so. okay. Sir, uh, uh, there was one uh, message which I read in chat box. Uh, one of the participant was asking about uh, the scopes are only for life sciences students in the field of uh, healthcare sector or any graduate from the art or commerce background can have an opportunity to join such kind of courses. Sure. So it's a good question. Whoever has asked. see the medical field basically comes from the stream of the basic science right so preferred route is with the science background life science of course because there is a added benefit when it comes to as a life science as a backdrop with the kind of subjects that you are undergoing but even a basic science is fine but for non science especially for when we are talking about commerce or we are talking about even the arts there are specific fields when it comes to healthcare something like dialysis dialysis does not mean that you should be a strong science background person because dialysis the technique is more on managing the equipment and interfacing the patient where your compassion or human interaction is important the way you, any student any expert can maintain its own bike for maintaining a bike or automobile you need not be an engineer or a science student it's your acumen as a technical ability to maintain that as equipment so that is one aspect second aspect even the phlebotomy for that purpose the skill is more important than the basic science knowledge when it comes to phlebotomy also as a field so there were again not mandatory that you should be taking as a science background the third aspect if you see my slide clearly in depth in public health is another opportunity where even there was even the spot which was there as a commerce so even if you are in a commerce stream you still can have a indoors where you can get into the Uh, the public health as a domain expertise know how so i have answered it in a right spirit as a right way to reach out thank you sir i hope the participant uh, must be satisfied with the answer yeah, given so by sir yes, definitely they must okay. okay so hope uh the rest of the participants have no query related to that and if they will have they can contact so or can write it in chat box so without wasting time uh, we are heading towards our technical session thank you sir thank for you. your informative lecture so we are heading towards our technical session and 
I'll brief you about the technical session. We have two technical session. Session one is from 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, the keynote speaker of technical session one is Dr. Jitendra Sharma. And then concluding with the session two, uh, which will be, uh, be duration of 2 to 3 p.m. And the keynote speaker of session two will be Dr. Ashir Bargat, sir. And now I request Ms. Neha Thakur, ma'am, to proceed with technical session one. Over to you, Neha, ma'am. Thank you, Sarita, madam. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, yes, you are audible. Thank you, ma'am. A very good afternoon to all. I, Ms. Neha Thakur, welcomes you all on behalf of Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalaya Nagpur, technical session one of one day national conference on emerging trends of life sciences in view of current pandemic situation. Organized by Department of Life Sciences, Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalena. For this technical session, we have with us Dr. Jitendra Sharma, Program Management Officer, Chemicals and Health Branch, Economy Division, UNEP, that is United Nations Environment Program, Geneva. I heartily welcome our eminent guest speaker, Dr. Jitendra Sharma, for this technical session. I welcome all dignitaries present here as well as all participants. On this auspicious occasion, we have a dynamic personality with us and it gives me an immense pleasure to introduce Dr. Jitendra Sharma, sir. Mr. Jitendra Sharma is working with United Nations Environment Programs, Economy Division, Geneva as Program Management Officer. He is coordinating range of GEF, that is Global Environment Facility, funded projects on persistent organic pollutants and supporting other activities on chemicals and waste management. He has over 12 years of experience in the area of environmental studies, particularly chemicals and waste management, including expertise of Stockholm and Rotterdam Conventions and SAICM, that is Strategic Approach to International Chemicals Management. He has also worked with UNEP's country office in India as coordinator for chemicals and waste management. With UNEDO, that is United Nations Industrial Development Organization as technical project support and was posted in MOF, that is Ministry of Government, Forest, and Climate Change, New Delhi, India. At the ministry, he looked after technical aspects pertaining to various projects, chemicals, waste legislations, along with providing inputs for activities related to meetings of persistent organic pollutants review committee, chemical review committee, conference of parties, mainly Stockholm and Rotterdam conventions and SAICM. He worked with the ministry to prohibit certain POPs, that is persistent organic pollutants in 2018 and supported the process of ratification of new POPs in India. Prior to working with UNEP and UNIDO, Sir worked at CSIR Niri Nagpur, India, under various capacities for more than seven years. He was instrumental in coordinating various activities of Stockholm Conventions Regional Center, hosted by CSIR Niri. He has authored, co-authored several research publications chapters in peer-reviewed journals and books. He is one of the very few professionals from India working on POPs and related conventions along with hazardous chemicals, waste management, and helping various agencies in activities related to chemical management related multilateral and environmental agreements. Apart from chemicals and waste activities, he has also coordinated a project on AMR, that is antimicrobial resistance and environment in India. So I am highly delighted 
to invite Dr. Jitendra Sharma sir to enlighten us with his valuable knowledge on the topic that is waste management and chemical conventions, which are said to be burning issues in view of environmental conservation. So I invite Dr. Sharma sir. Over to you, Sharma sir. Thank you, madam. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Neha Thakur. Uh, I am thankful to uh, Kamla Nehru College, which is like kind of homecoming to me after many years. Uh, it is my honor, privilege, and I am very humbled to be part of this particular conversation. And the previous speaker, uh, Samir Joshi sir, has also spoken a lot, and probably it was also very much learning experience for me. And I was extremely benefited by the initial session, including inaugural session, as well as uh, the first uh, lecture from uh, Samir Joshi sir. And I will try to make this uh, kind of uh, uh, presentation. I'll share my screen very soon. Uh, but uh, the screen, the slides are only to kind of uh, run the talk, which I'm going to like kind of present uh, in this session. But I'll also be happy to receive questions when I'm speaking. You can write in the chat so that we can have an interactive session because there are several aspects, especially on environmental management and these things uh, probably are very kind of close to your heart. You may have a lot of kind of queries or questions and it will also have because when I was listening to the previous uh, uh, session, uh, I tried to think a little bit about how to link environmental aspects to life science also because that is the uh, kind of title of this particular uh, conference because my presentation is uh, a little bit technical i'll keep it very simple when i speak but at the same time how do we link life science or other uh, studies because it should definitely benefit students when i'm speaking and uh, i share my my experience and whatever knowledge i uh, have gained and I'm gaining uh, through my experiences. So uh, I, first of all, I would like to thank everyone from Kamla Nehru College. I have like, uh, everyone has been very supportive to me uh, uh, since many years. I, I completed my MSc in 2008 from Kamla Nehru College from biotechnology division. So I, uh, and uh, uh, since then I have been working in, in, in NIRI and then UNIDO and then UNEP and now uh, in UNEP's Geneva office. Let me share my screen and then we will again start our conversation. Let me know when you can see the screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, yeah. it is visible, sir. Okay. Thank you. So the basic uh, aim of my presentation is to give a general overview on the need of waste management as well as international conventions. Uh, the I cannot, uh, okay, now it is, it is in the full screen. So the, the reason for this topic is also, uh, there are two reasons. One is my experience and expertise in this area. Second is there is lack of awareness on these areas. And many of these things are interlinked. I'll just start from different activities because we are also talking about uh, UNEP and environmental aspects. So we are kind of global environmental authority for various environmental issue. We bring new areas. Uh, which are which are required to be uh, addressed by member states. Of course, all the uh, uh, priority areas are kind of adopted by member states. We run with all these countries. India is one of the key contributors for this. And we mainly provide leadership uh, on environmental aspects in identification of areas, prepare reports on what is latest happening, what should be the things. And we have seven programmatic areas in which we usually work and which include climate change, disaster uh, management, 
then ecosystem environmental governance chemicals waste and air quality that is my area of work then resource efficiency which is also very much linked to chemicals waste and air quality uh, and then environment under review all thematic areas have different kind of priorities and activities identified under these and when you talk about life science uh, everything is linked to these seven areas because climate change has direct linkages with uh, with with life science how how we deal with uh, uh, when 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 you talk about uh, biodiversity because this sub program one climate change and healthy and productive ecosystem are directly linked to each other and then you don't you you should not only have the the diversity in terms of planting trees but it also uh, uh, microbial diversity and ecology also makes uh, an important role in this then re resilience of disasters and conflicts we have already seen a lot of kind of flash flooding and different kind of environmental uh, not not environmental different kind of disasters which are happening in terms of cyclones in terms of flood in terms of kind of uh, uh, drought all these things and then environmental governance and environmental under review these two aspects are also interlinked where we talk about the policies and legislations which are happening which are required and we give recommendation we do not ask countries to do that we give recommendations that you should consider these things then chemicals waste and air quality this sub program mainly focuses on uh, various aspects of waste management hazardous chemicals management it include legislations as well as uh, what country should take actions with respect to different activities then resource efficiency is mainly driven by one of the sustainable development goal which is uh, sustainable consumption and production which is sustainable development goal 12 uh, which asks countries to kind of utilize their resources uh, uh, in a in a in a sustainable manner you might be reading every year around august september that this year on august 5th the world has already utilized the resources which they should have utilized by the end of december that means we are not at all resource efficient so these are these are the uh, these these are the activities which are kind of promoted under this uh, particular program and unep also has a office in india and i was privileged to work with unep in india for two and a half for around 3 years uh the the office started in 2016 and the 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 priority areas are also linked to uh the sub program thematic sub programs which i have spoken in the previous slide uh i'll not go into detail about these but i'll mainly give you some kind of idea about how uh resource efficiency and waste management are interlinked and how sustainable consumes, cons consumption and production is is important and I, i have split my presentation into two aspect one is waste one is chemicals where multilateral environmental agreements how how they play key role in kind of promoting a kind of guiding countries to take informed uh, informed decisions so you know the i am talking about asia pacific which is kind of the most populated region uh, throughout the globe and we are also growth engine for world economy you you consider india you consider china you consider thailand vietnam philippines these countries are like kind of uh, growing at a faster pace than the developed world in past but at the same time due to this growing population growing demand everything we are also kind of utilizing resources at a greater speed and uh, we also expect that the population which is approximately 700 crore 7 billion right now will will be around 850 900 billion by 2050 that means we need more resources to sustain them our consumption will increase our consumption of natural resources as well as our extraction of those resources and utilization and is also is linked to our uh kind of what we say moder modernization globalization where we have kind of also started using unsustainable practices just for the sake of convenience for example uh, i will also come into that all those single use plastic thing but for example we are consuming more single use plastic than ever when we, when we were surviving very well without these products 15 years back but in last 15 years only for the sake of convenience also uh, there there are some issues 
uh, where people also talk about hygiene but uh, but those are the those are the consumption pattern changes which has led us to make ourselves unsustainable and also when as we move from village to city these things are very much visible the this this particular thing is also kind of uh, uh, documented in various reports how the waste generation has increased over the years how of course the higher income countries have more waste generation in, as compared to the middle income countries or least developed countries or small island countries but definitely we are also like kind of uh, uh, moving ahead and uh, producing more and more waste every year when you see the reports from swachh bharat mission or central pollution control board you can you can easily see uh, sorry uh, uh, you can you can easily see the the amount of waste we are generating every year of course we have fairly good recycling uh, as per the central pollution control board data but that is still not enough because when you go out you you can see you don't have to see the, stat, the, the these kind of statistics which i am uh, presenting here to see what is the waste management scenario in the country or in the in, in the whole world the, th this is also one of the kind of uh, statistics which i have uh, kind of adopted from international solid waste association which prepares such kind of statistics at a global level there are also statistics at a regional level and as well as at country level at country level it is uh, central pollution control board which is the authority to kind of collect data from state pollution control boards and uh, give us a, in an annual report but the issue here can be tackled with a sustainable resource management you see two pyramids uh, one is of course uh, which we usually follow is most of the waste is going into the landfill and we are not working on reduction and the second pyramid is which is an ideal condition where we should first minimize the waste we should kind of uh, use sustainable alternatives and processes uh, we should follow those things and then whatever uh, we are kind of using we should also try to make more reuse of material than whatever uh, we, we we cannot reuse we should recycle so this is also linked to the design of the product and that is where many industries are working and i am like very very frankly i can mention that this this is something which consumer and private sector can bring in government can bring in regulations but who will follow the regulations we have to follow the regulations and private sector will bring in innovation so what private sector also need to do is to design products which are more recyclable and that is something the world is talking about uh, that non recyclable product should be discouraged at at some point of time you cannot like for for some th some of the products you you do not have alternative so uh, so you have to use those but you have to minimize and then of course then you you can for organic waste you can compost then for some of the waste uh in environmental sustainability point of view waste to energy is is not recommended at a very highest level it is recommended but not at a highest level because the reasons are kind of we have mixed waste one second the efficiency of waste to energy plants are sometime questionable because uh, if the temperatures are not attained if waste or waste input is a uh, kind of uh, not of high quality mixed waste then there will be emissions of uh, uh, of gases like dioxins and furans which are also persistent organic pollutant and countries are asked to minimize their release and they are absolutely carcinogenic and then the last option is landfill because we should try to put minimum amount of waste into the landfill and that is how sustainable consumption and production and resource management comes into place what we can do we can there are there, there are few aspects which are very very kind of um, simple to adopt and this all leads to a circular economy where we use all kind of resources and uh, and do not waste resources at all to the uh, to the maximum extent possible one is which every student every citizen can start doing and kind of start promoting is to stop uncontrolled dumping and burning dumping is the waste going into the landfill burning is many of you 
even when 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 i was in nagpur i have done this uh, kind of like to burn a lot of waste especially in this season when you have like uh, 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 these uh, falling of leaves uh, you collect them and just burn them along with the other waste it generates lot of uh, uh, carcinogenic and toxic gases because you have chlorinated plastics uh, uh, in the mix waste so that is something which you can do at your home you don't have to kind of uh, uh, learn anything to do this then second is hazardous waste under control this is something which regulatory authorities have to do uh, there are categories of hazardous waste you have hazardous waste at your home for example batteries you are using for example the electronic waste which you generate has a lot of hazardous content then you have a uh, kind of bigger batteries of inverter and all uh, there are smaller batteries of when you use watches uh, and remotes and all these things so you have to keep it uh, separately so that is something which uh, has to be tackled of course you don't have much domestic hazardous waste at home but now there is another category which is of course yet not categorized into the hazardous waste management rule but that is uh the hazardous waste we are generating is in the form of disposable mask ppe kits uh gloves and all kind of uh, hy hygiene material which we are using for covid uh kind of prevention as well as at home quarantine at isolation center those also falls under uh, the biomedical waste but the biomedical waste mainly focuses on hospital based uh waste collection and all but what we are also doing at home is we have almost every house now have kind of experienced at least one covid case i hope that the the situation uh, uh, becomes better very soon but uh, but this is something which is also a kind of hazardous waste which will pose a threat of infection because that is being mixed into the solid waste and it is going into uh, the general waste tippers and then focus on waste prevention why why do we need to focus on waste prevention because as i have already mentioned about the resource consumption um, of human being on the planet we are consuming the 12 month of resources in eighth month like start of the eighth month every year so last year it was around 21st or 15th of august we consumed the resources which were to be required to be consumed by december so that is where we have to kind of start focusing on the prevention of waste utilizing our resources in a sustainable manner so that uh, we can sustain uh, our lives in a in a, in a environmentally uh, friendly manner then of course uh, focus on the feedback uh, uh, loops here we can promote kind of reusing the material so that we don't have much to recycle much to send it to landfill then of course you also develop some kind of uh, uh, in in unep we call it environmentally sound uh management of uh, ke of chemicals and waste both so that is how you have to adopt some of the processes and these are the initial kind of uh, 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 small steps which we can take some of the steps are to be taken by citizens some of the steps are to be taken by the regulatory authorities and governments and this we can we can somehow turn from a linear to circular economy i am always i always say this in different forums that if you cannot make a circular economy at least bend the line so whatever contribution you can do uh, we should kind of uh, never uh, uh, stop doing that then i have already mentioned about sustainable consumption and production which is also a kind of uh, uh, priority area under the 17 sustainable development goals adopted by countries in 2015 and sustainable development goal 12 title is sustainable consumption and production and it has different kind of sub indicators uh, and uh, different goals 12.1 12.2 12.3 12.4 kind of and this is mainly kind of all linked to the policy technology regulations incentives and then how how much we we need and how much we we can we can kind of reuse so these are different kind of areas uh when we adopt sustainable consumption and production practices we can minimize emissions of waste into the landfill or into the environment that is why we call closing the loop and uh, when i mentioned that 
I we should we should if we cannot close the loop, we should at least bend the curve. So that is how we should start. Small steps uh, make big impact, and there are different kind of industries and stakeholders who have different uh, responsibilities from the industries to kind of uh, manufacture environment friendly and recyclable products to the distribution chain and then to the users who should kind of also use what is required and also try to find out how how you can reuse things how you can recycle things and there are there are some uh, some documents i will not go into detail but there are some documents for asia pacific for roadmap for sustainable consumption and production which can be referred uh, and then there are for, for for the priority sectors have already been identified under the roadmap including the mainstreaming sustainable consumption and production that mainly leads into the awareness among the people then sustainable industries especially small and medium sized enterprises then the information to the consumer that we can uh, there i have seen some products which labels on the product that this is made up of recycled plastic or this is a biodegradable product or this kind of so these are the consumer information you can see and then sustainable procurement this is something which of course uh, is mainly right now uh, in the very nascent stage uh, government of india has also set up a task force on sustainable public procurement where the the, the products which are kind of uh, procured through through tendering process in government offices are now prioritized based on the uh, based on the availability of sustainable alternatives for example you might have seen that government is now one of the one of the very very uh, uh, easy example to understand is the procurement of electric vehicle for government offices so that is that is called a that is an example of sustainable procurement the second example of sustainable procurement is kind of especially this this is right now in public offices which i call public offices are government offices uh, where the, the 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 procurement is done through public money so the second example which government kind of is considering is uh, whenever they procure air conditioner they have to kind of also uh, uh, opt for sustainable options there are and there there are star ratings for those acs so you also one is sustainable procurement and second you link it to the energy efficiency and then third public procurement is also to install kind of solar panels and so that uh, a lot of energy can be converted into uh, can be used from the renewable sources then sustainable building and construction yeah i have already touched upon the solar uh, but there are there are designs of the buildings which uh, you might have seen in many offices uh, where they have kind of sensor based lightings that it's there is no movement in my room uh, for a particular period of time, the lights will switch off. That means the light is only consumed for the period of time somebody is working there. That is how sensors work. And uh, Samir Ji has also mentioned something about artificial intelligence and sen sensor based things. So that is also linked to that. Then sustainable uh, buildings and construction also brings about uh, a proper ventilation and lighting where you do not sometimes need uh, an artificial light or artificial fan and there are there are many buildings i have seen in delhi of course uh, there may be in nagpur i am out of nagpur for for few years now but yes uh, these practices are now uh, very common then sustainable tourism this is something which uh, we can start following uh, because this is he, this is where we have seen you might have seen on social media and many activists are also like kind of uh, uh, putting out videos and photographs, especially in Himalaya region or uh, some hill stations where uh, the, the tourists are going there and leaving their waste uh, on, the, on the hills itself, or they are just throwing it into the river or canals. And then of course it has to be clean, but nature gives it back. You might have seen like three years back when there were floods in Kerala, the, the, all the plastics which were thrown into the ocean came back to the, to the cities. So, so this is something which we have to think, we have to kind of respond, uh, uh, behave responsibly. Then sustainable lifestyle. This is something which is also linked to all these things. Like you can refuse single use plastic, you can kind of use reusable products. You can kind of, uh, uh, especially in terms of 
uh, uh, food habits also you can eat locally whatever is the is the is the look uh, is available uh, locally so these are all uh, kind of sustainable consumption and production uh, areas then there are different stakeholders who have to play different role government have to play main role in kind of regulatory framework bring legislations uh, they also sometimes give subsidies they also take taxes on on some of the things to kind of run uh, things government also need to work on preparing guidelines make awareness programs then there is private sector which will mainly bring innovation because most of the innovations throughout the world are coming because of the need and private sector is very fast uh, in kind of identifying the needs and bringing out bringing up the solutions so that is how the private sector and businesses need to also bring finances and uh, bring innovation then citizens if we do not follow what is the role of like what will be the benefit of what uh, government and private sector are doing we also have to follow some kind of uh, uh, responsible behavior uh, and kind of promote uh, environment friendly uh, lifestyles then this is this is one of my very favorite slide which i put uh, not only in waste management but, but when i speak about chemicals also there are there are four instruments which are very key to uh, all these kind of uh, aspects one is regulatory instrument then financial instrument these two probably are brought up or initiated by the government then voluntary instrument uh, ngos does a lot of uh, voluntary based awareness program uh, which is also linked to the information based instrument where like uh, a lot of awareness uh, raising uh, is done so these are the four key pillars uh, by which a lot of policy responses uh, become successful uh, there are some reports these are these are very technical just to give you an overview how uh, uh, we prepare reports on the global assessment of different kind of chemicals and waste so you have a global waste management outlook it was released around 2015 we are now working on the global waste management outlook 2 which will be an updated version and then there are different uh, kind of reports for for mercury for uh, a regional waste management outlook uh then there are training courses on uh, on sound management of chemicals and waste then there are guidelines which can be utilized by countries and they can adopt whatever because these are these are the global guidelines and reports uh india may not need a lot of the information from these guidelines but india can adopt whatever best practices are following uh, are, are being followed in other countries and kind of use uh uh, the, the 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 valuable and in, uh, and uh, useful information from these tools this is something which i uh, uh, would also be like to uh, speak about is uh, the single use plastics uh, so the single use plastics have been an issue for many years but have been recognized in past 3 4 years more than ever uh, especially when india hosted the world environment day in 2018 uh, where the prime minister also kind of announced uh, India to phase out or eliminate single use plastics by 2022 and 2022 is just coming. It is not easy to phase out any kind of product, but why? Uh, and this particular report provides a lot of information. I will not go into detail, but why are we uh, failing to implement these rules? Is it government or is it kind of implementation gaps? or is it citizens who do not want to kind of give up on single use plastics there are many reasons uh, for this but uh, especially in in the state of maharashtra the most comprehensive plastic waste management rule at a sub national level in india is of the state of maharashtra we have plastic waste management rules 2016 from central government and then all the state governments are also encouraged to develop their own guidelines which can be more stringent than the plastic waste management rule they cannot relax it as per the epa rule that is environment protection act but absolutely they can they can make it more stringent so government of maharashtra brought a very comprehensive rule of plastic waste management in 2018 and 
we have seen its impact in initial months uh, when i was in unep's country office and we wanted to shoot a video in mumbai uh, to on on some plastic waste uh, single use plastic awareness where when 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 our executive director was um, uh, was was in mumbai and it it was very difficult for us to find single use plastic at that time but now i am uh, staying in before i before i travel to geneva uh, in july i am working from home from maharashtra i am in in gondia district and you will find any kind of single use plastic any time any amount so this is where of course there are gaps in implementation there are rules available but these are not being implemented but these are not being implemented because there is a demand of this single use plastic and who is bringing this demand these demands are brought up by us uh, the citizen you go uh, for kind of vegetable shopping uh, especially in cities like nagpur or in delhi where where i have seen people want alu in different polythene tomato in different polythene mirchi in different polythene the only reason is they do not want to sort them out when they go to home so that is what i have mentioned in my first slide also when you have to behave sustainably you have to also kind of uh, used to to some inconvenience so that is something which uh, is which which i have learned a lot in past 4 or 5 years i was also like this uh, when when i was in nagpur and when i moved to delhi uh, i got in touch with one of the most inspiring person you might have known uh, mr afroz shah uh, who has done the largest beach clean up in mumbai uh, so Uh, when i got in touch with him i got inspired and i have seen what impact these single use plastics are creating on our environment not only human being or it is not only like bad aesthetically but it is also bad for the for the for for the environment as well as i am just also opening the chat if there are any questions so okay so the, the so this is how then i i i personally stopped using of single use plastics in 2016 and since 5 years i have not like kind of i have tried to avoid as many single use plastics as i can of course packaging you cannot avoid but this is something which you can you can start with a small contribution to the nature by avoiding single use plastics in terms of carry bags in terms of plastic cutlery in terms of Uh, polystyrene cutlery which is uh, in, uh, commonly we call it thermocol in terms of plastic straw so these these things are easily avoidable and you can def but there are another reason for kind of lack of implementation of single use plastics rules is also covid pandemic when covid started people are also very much kind of uh, uh, worried about the hygiene issue so they uh, we have started using all kind of single use plastics again and at this time government cannot do anything because health is the first priority we have to save lives first and then we can think about the about the environment that is that is something which which is uh, which is the mandate or not the mandate but which is something uh, the priorities are to be set up by by the authorities what to kind of manage first and what uh, we can take tackle later the issue with these single use plastics are also only plastic bottles pet bottles are recycled more than 90% of the pet bottles are recycled in india which is an, which is which is a commendable achievement uh, in 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 the country the the issue with other plastics are they are never get collected because it has no value and when you see that the waste management in, is not proper uh, you also have contribution to that because you do not segregate your waste into wet and dry the when when it goes to the landfill who will take efforts to clean up the mess you have created or i have created no th this is not their job this is my job this is your job to do so these are these are small contributions which you can you can you can make uh, to kind of the nature which is protecting us uh, from all kind of um, uh, these things so i'll not speak much about these things because you know there are there are many general things but i'll go into the next slide uh, 
yeah this is this is also a, a, a report where you can see what are the legal limits of single use plastics uh, globally now i am coming into the uh, sustainable chemical management this is something so this is something which we have to also uh, think this is very much neglected area when i was working in the ministry also so chemical management was not a, as highlighted as other aspects but everything we use is chemical we cannot survive without chemical we are using more than 100000 chemicals um, uh, and we don't know uh, which are harmful which are which are which are sustainable but chemicals also play main role in kind of countries gdp india is one of the top 10 chemical producer importer exporter um, uh, in the world but we also need to manage these chemicals in an environmentally sound manner because many of these chemicals are hazardous proven hazardous chemicals which have carcinogenic property endocrine disrupting uh, properties and all these things to to, to tackle this uh, there are different multilateral environmental agreements we call it mea uh, which are kind of legally binding instruments for countries to take informed decisions to manage these chemicals in an uh, environment friendly manner this is something which i'll not go into detail i am also very much aware of the time i have so the unia resolutions what is unia is united nations environment assembly it is the highest body for environmental negotiations where uh, uh, the countries talk to uh, adopt various decisions on different environmental priorities and areas where there are there are resolutions which are adopted by member states and they have to take steps against this and kind of uh, uh, a report uh, to the unia every year and this 4 by 9 addressing single use plastic pollution i am very happy that this is uh, a resolution which was actually proposed by government of india uh, where uh, they kind of negotiated with all countries and got it adopted of course it was not the same form which was proposed uh, which was adopted but a slightly diluted but it is a good start then these are the different uh, the different international treaties on chemicals and waste management and different agencies who are responsible for uh for implementing these uh, rules in india uh but there are main four or five uh, kind of uh, meas or framework which are responsible uh, for the chemicals and waste management especially hazardous chemicals and waste management which include brs that is basel rotterdam stockholm convention then strategic approach to international chemical management this is one this is this this we call as a frame policy framework which is not a legally binding but it it is an overarching which covers all the conventions and then the latest one is minamata convention on mercury you might have studied in your uh, school days about the minamata disease the disease was caused due to the leakage of minamata uh, leakage of mercury in near near the minamata town of japan and that is and then it it killed many people it had uh, created a lot of diseases in 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 many people and the effects are still known so to to prevent uh, mercury poisoning poisoning minamata convention was adopted in 2017 and the stock i'll briefly talk about these conventions the basel convention is mainly on transboundary movement of hazardous waste and their disposal this was also brought in Uh, the reason was like there are many developed countries who send their waste to developing countries for dumping or recycling whatever you say so this convention was brought in to regulate that that no no country can send their hazardous waste to another country without their consent they have to give information what are the content in their waste what are the hazards and all these things so this is this is one of the oldest uh, chemical and waste convention this also provide a lot of information on technical guidelines for chemicals which are listed under other conventions the recent update has been plastic waste partnership this is mainly focusing on the single use plastics and their regulations throughout the world and this was adopted in 2019 cop uh this is plastic waste Part partnership uh, i don't need to go much in detail then rotterdam convention is mainly on the prior informed consent that is what i have mentioned one is basel convention is for the waste Rotterdam convention is for the chemicals it covers three type of chemicals one is pesticide one is industrial chemical and the third is severely hazardous pesticide formulation that is also pesticide but those are formulations so there are there are chemicals which are not banned 
by countries but it is known that they are hazardous and if india need a hazardous chemical listed under rotterdam convention and we need to import say from germany uh so germany has to uh like uh, india has to say send a request to germany germany has to give us all the information about the waste what are its hazards so that in case of any spillage or misuse how to manage those things so those are the guidance documents which are also like coming with the with with, with, with this convention text so this is mainly on the on taking consent prior to import or export so this is mainly focusing on this uh the third one is stockholm this is the most stringent convention among all this mainly focuses on elimination of persistent organic pollutants right now there are 30 chemicals uh, which are listed under the convention uh, and uh, you might have if not all you have definitely heard of one chemical which is called as ddt uh, so ddt is a pesticide which is used for uh, specially vector control but many people may especially the the people who have uh, seen the past agricultural practices also might have known that ddt was also used for agricultural practices like around 30 years back of course it might be still in use illegally but uh, but we uh, but that is very very small so ddt is one of the persistent organic pollutant that is just to give you an example uh, the ddt has to be eliminated from use in coming years there there is no year is not decided but every two years when the conference of parties sits to discuss these issues they discusses continued use of ddt there is another chemical which is very common is uh, polychlorinate biphenyls this is particular this is also a pop which is used in transformer oils capacitors and all these things so india has stock of these two chemicals uh, there are other chemicals which uh, may or may not be much of of much relevance to india at the moment but there is one more uh, there are two more chemicals one is lindane you might know lindane is also used for it was earlier used as a pesticide but it was also used as a pharmaceutical product to control head lice scabies and all these things so these chemicals have been banned uh, under stockholm convention under national leg legislation also there is another very common pesticide which we call endosulfan so endosulfan is also one of the pops these are just to give you some examples of these these chemicals and stockholm convention every two year negotiate on a listing of uh, new chemicals uh, india is also a party to this convention uh, and uh, take necessary steps and this is the this is one of the overarching framework which is a policy framework to support governments on taking actions for environmentally sound management of chemicals but but the main focus is also here there are eight emerging policy issues which have been identified under sicom its mandate was till 2020 but uh, uh, now the sicom and uh, all the member states member states means countries are discussing about what will be beyond 2020 so we are right now in the in the process of finalizing the priorities for beyond 2020 but these emerging policy issues like lead in paint india has taken excellent step uh, on lead in paint to regulate the lead content in paint uh, especially household and decorative paint not the industrial paint uh, which is 90 ppm is the is the is is the is the rule now then chemicals in product you have as i said in my initial slide on chemicals that everything you use has the has chemicals but there are many products which has hazardous chemicals uh, for example your computers have heavy metals your computer apart from precious metals like gold uh, it also has heavy metals it also has persistent organic pollutants pops like brominated flame retardants which are listed in the stockholm convention then a lot of cheap indian uh, cheap toys not indian cheap plastic toys they use a lot of kind of hazardous chemicals because those are uh, those chemicals are cheap gives a lot of kind of color to those things especially when you see a very glorious uh, kind of uh, toy it may have heavy metal so these are these are the things and this is where we we can start practicing uh, some sustainability especially in terms of uh, just see the labels there are toys even the cheap one also has labels that this is 
uh, phthalate free this is bpa free because toys are uh, among the very sensitive things because any kind of toy children will take it in uh, its mouth so that is how we have to uh, specially protect them from from and many of these chemicals which are actually coated on these toys and it will easily go into uh, the body then there are uh, there are chemicals in products which are kind of uh, used as a water repellent in pizza boxes you see a lot of uh, uh, now those chemicals have banned but earlier they used to use pfas that is poly uh, uh, fluorinated um, chemicals uh, uh, which are which are used in boxes so that it repels uh, water from there then you have hi highly hazardous pesticide uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals then nanotechnology there are there are products which are being discussed under this then hazardous chemicals in electronics then then one of the emerging issue is pharmaceutical products and perfluorinated chemicals i'll talk about this uh, but i'll also not go into detail in this because i think only 7 minutes are left so one of the uh, uh, thing how uh, these uh, conventions are supported is also through regional center there are different regional centers to support countries on implementation of these convention and one of the regional center is located in nagpur uh, in, in in csi or neeri uh, which supports country as well as other uh, regional countries not only india but other regional countries also in fulfilling their obligations under these convention uh i'll also not go into detail about this uh, this is also one of the report on global chemicals outlook it is too technical so now now coming to the covid 19 this is something which i have got from one of our unep report how environmental challenges are linked to uh, linked to covid there are issues on infectious waste there are issues on waste management and sanitation there are issues with respect to humanitarian actions uh, there are issues on unsustainable land conversion for for land filling and other aspects there are issues on continued like kind of uh, uh, protected area management these there, there are many many interlink issues of covid uh, covid uh, uh, pandemic which has impact on uh, on 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 environment and you it will be also interesting to know uh, for you that most of the emerging diseases are of zoonotic in nature that means it is coming somewhere from animals and unep in 2017 frontier report already announced in 2017 that 18 80% of the new emerging diseases will be of zoonotic diseases and how we can pr prevent these zoonotic diseases these are the the most important thing is preservation of biodiversity we that is that is the mo that is the key aspect of uh, of prevention of such zoonotic uh, diseases and pandemics you might have seen sars mers covid then bird flu all these are zoonotic origin all these are of zoonotic origin uh, all these all these new diseases so we have to be very careful about pre preventing our nature uh, then there are some fact sheets which we have developed uh, on covid waste management it has everything from what is biomedical waste what is covid waste how to treat them what are the technologies you can see uh, i have given link but uh, this these are available uh, uh, on on unep website when you put covid waste management fact sheets you'll get it then uh, the the another issue is okay another issue is uh, uh, the antimicrobial resistance so covid has also seen and not only covid but we have also seen in past many years that the the consumption of antibiotics has also increased this is something which is which which i i started when i joined uh, unep's india office uh, specially on identifying environmental dimensions of uh, of amr because there are different channels from where these antibiotics are entering into the environment and, and it makes these pathogenic bacteria uh, more resistant to these antibiotics because these bacteria are also coming from the environment so that is how we have started a study on kind of identifying environmental dimensions and prioritizing what should be the action india has a national action plan on amr uh, for sure but it doesn't has like extensive coverage of environmental dimension but everything is linked to environment so amr is one issue uh, which is an emerging issue where uh, where where the scientists are working and it is a, it is a challenge to kind of you might have 
heard a lot of stories about multi drug resistant tuberculosis what is the reason of this multi drug resistance these these bacteria mutate or change themselves uh, and then they they bypass these antibiotic treatment and that is why they cannot be treated by one antibiotic so we are using antibiotics not only in medicine but also in feed stocks if many of you might be knowing in poultry farms and in in fishing uh, ponds people use antibiotics so that they uh, this also promotes their growth so these are and then they throw this water into the environment then there are industries where effluent discharge may lead to antibiotic resistance then there are we as a household we throw our medicines in, in our solid waste or a general waste it goes into the environment so there are many issues which are still to be addressed this is going to be one of the biggest challenge of future apart from climate change because this is something which is which cannot be controlled by us if if these uh, bio viruses and bacteria kind of mutate themselves or change themselves uh, and bypass uh, the medicines and antibiotics uh, then another issue is biomedical waste management uh, i have already touched upon that but uh, the covid has also kind of uh, uh, uh impacted the overall biomedical waste management system in the country not only in the small towns but also in the in the in the larger cities because nobody thought when the biomedical waste management systems were created at decentralized level nobody thought that uh, a pandemic like this can kind of uh, uh, create so much of extra waste for which the system is not prepared so that is something which is also being studied uh, we are doing something in in the city of agra to identify what is the impact of covid on overall biomedical waste management how much is the increase of biomedical waste management how much is the pressure what is the capacity of the city to treat this enhanced amount of biomedical waste what is the what are also the contribution of different single use plastics uh, in terms of mask ppe kits gloves and all these things and also Uh, at a household level we are also working on a on a on a on a on a on a evaluation of single use plastic legislation throughout the country so this is something which we are doing through our uh, country office in india and we are in touch with these district authorities and of course i am also managing a project with neeri on ddt alternatives uh, especially on promoting integrated vector pest management where you reduce or minimize the use of uh, pesticides but use different integrated approaches to kind of control uh, different kind of pest my target is to kind of uh, uh, mainly vector borne disease especially malaria uh, but but there are co benefits of each sustainable practice so that is something i, I was also managing a project in in neeri uh, when they were doing on sustainable chemical management and supporting uh, implementation of these conventions so i i have moved out of unex india office but i have uh, still linkages with india we will be continue to working with 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 the with the government on different environmental aspects and i'll also be happy to kind of uh, uh, be available for you to kind of provide any kind of advice uh because there are some limitations which and protocols which i have to follow but at uh, uh, there are there are few things which we we can do because there are there are initiatives unep can only do uh on the request of country not on the request of an individual so that is something which which is which is uh, which is something which we have to follow so i will stop here and i will be happy to kind of answer any question or kind of any feedback or any detail if anybody want thank you thank you so much sir for giving such am i audible yes thank you so much sir for giving such a nice information in a very effective manner so waste generation waste management it is really a challenging thing reduce reuse recycle strategy must be there single use plastic it is also one of the most problematic waste sir nowadays chemical plus uh, pesticides they are creating nuisance to our soil fertility also so you have thrown light on each and every topics which are burning issues of the environment and that will we need to be conserve soil air water these sources must be conserve and it is responsibility of everyone to do these things so by this informative lecture all will 
come to know that what is the current situation and due to covid 19 large number of biomedical waste is also generating biomedical waste chemical waste these all are said to be the hazardous waste categories and their management must be there so along with that uh, the persistent organic pollutants are also hazardous like ddt and these organochlorines they are remaining as it is for uh, thousands hundred of years and they are not biodegradable we can say so that are also harmful methyl mercury like chemicals they are also causing harmful impacts and they are directly showing effect on the health of the all type of the organisms so that is also one of the important issue that the organochlorines must be banned in each and every country so i think now the session it is open for discussion and if participants are having any query or any question they can put their queries in the chat box yeah there was a question posted by uh, one of the students on youtube so i would like to read the question on behalf of that student sir i have a question is uh, is there any job related to environmental field for biotechnology student yes uh, absolutely so this is something uh, uh, there is an interesting story uh, uh, when i was a msc student in uh, in kamla nehru college one of uh, our 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 teacher asked all of us that what do you want to pursue after your msc every student started like saying okay i want to work on immunology somebody said i want to work in molecular biology somebody said i want to work in genetic engineering nobody spoke about environment even not even me and then uh, the professor i i still remember the name it was uh, uh, doc, mr abhijit ghonge that was the first kind of uh, uh, i i remember his name because he was the initial uh, teacher who who came to our class so he then suggested why don't you think of environmental microbiology or biotechnology you have niri uh, in nagpur uh, uh, which is which was or which is still one of the premier institute in the in the region not only in india so that is how the destiny uh, took me to niri of course i i i i studied as a general student on biotechnology but you have a lot of jobs on environmental uh, aspect especially in biotechnology uh, you can start with uh, the agency like like there are many csir and icmr and ic ar institutions who are working on 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 environmental aspects and molecular biology now you have this covid there are people who are working on on genome sequencing there are people who are working on environmental sequencing uh, if you talk about biotechnology but you can also mold your career uh, on on other integrated aspects where people are also going into environmental consultancies where uh, where they they get to uh, work on different kind of environmental approvals analysis if you want if you are more interested in in laboratory work you can you can do you can go into qr qc and other other things so this is how uh, my journey started with niri of course and then i was fortunate to kind of work on pops from the from the first day of my my career uh, but that is how you you have to kind of identify there are many private sector agencies there are many government entities who are working on environmental aspects of molecular biology biotechnology because these are all all very important uh, aspects and environmental environment is going to be at the center of everything in future thank you sir thank you very much so i am very much thankful to sharma sir once again and also i am very much thankful to one and all who are present here so uh, i think one question is there uh, sir uh, one question is there in the chat box uh, by shubham rode how can a biochemist contribute in the field of environmental science no the answer is more or less same uh, what what biotechnologists can do uh, also a biochemist can can start working on because this, this, these are and biochemistry has a special advantage that you know a lot about about chemistry about biochemistry you also know 
a bit about uh, biotechnology and microbiology so it also has some kind of advantages and you can any time because because msc is a kind of uh, something which is you which is a degree you get on a specialization for your masters but you can that that also provides you an opportunity to kind of divert uh, your professional career into one of these aspects even i i i am sure that biochemistry also has a environmental biochemistry uh, chapter when you study because we had an environmental biotechnology microbiologists have environmental microbiology as as one of the uh, in in one of the semesters so so it is not how can we contribute you you can start working on an environmental project and start like then then you can you can learn new things and and progress there another question in the chat box it is how neuroscience is related with biotechnology i am not the right person to answer this very sorry yes sir <laughs> i don't I want to know. give a wrong answer yes, to yes yes okay so if anyone is having any query or if they have any question they can put it in the chat box so uh, i think hello yes hello ma'am yes i have one question to the sir sir yes. uh, do you have any idea about a uh, current scenario of development of bioplastic which uh, would be degraded rapidly i i have a sense of it thank you this is a very kind of uh, uh, very common question which i get when i speak on plastics yes there are studies going on even uh, compostable plastics are allowed as per plastic waste management rules this is a very tricky issue especially in terms of compostable plastic to be very frank uh, uh, my personal uh, kind of opinion is also if there is a compostable plastic uh, the rule also says that it has to be composted in a particular uh, environmental condition which you or i cannot create so those are compostable but at a particular condition so that is something which is i see a gap but bioplastics yes uh, it is it is it is much needed there are there are agencies and inventors who have started working on bioplastics and they are working well the only issue with bioplastic right now is the cost and the scale uh, they are they are not as cheap as the polymer based plastics they are they are not produced in the quantity which is required so that these there, there there are some scale up issues and the cost issues which are to be sorted out and of course uh, the biodegradability i just uh, always say that uh, inventing a new product should not create a new prob environmental problem so all these risk analyses and degradation studies should be done before we approve any kind of including so called bioplastics thank you sir sir again one question is uh, which type of waste was created by nanotechnology no uh, nanotechnology doesn't like we, we cannot mention uh, we cannot because this is a this is a new area where the studies has uh, have started but nanotechnology i am not an expert on that but nanotechnology is something which also uses uh, some kind of chemicals to deliver uh, when you say uh, pharmaceutical products to the body and all these things so the, the research is right now uh, going on uh, the waste has not been addressed so far because this is this is in an essence stage but i see another question yes uh, yes yeah how to reduce chemical use in agricultural practices yes very simple reduce use of chemical pesticide and fertilizer you 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 can you can start using whatever conventional practices our ancestors used to do and use fertilizers and chemicals to the uh, not not on a on a excess quantity but what is required because you also need these chemical fertilizers as well as pesticides to kind of have food security for the country so we have to use this in a in a environmentally sound manner the issue which i have seen in my my past few years of experience is these uh, these pesticides and fertilizers are also used by mouth publicity not by what is written on the packet because all pesticide and fertilizer packets give information on how this has to be used how much this has to be used but if i am a farmer 
I talk to my friend who is also a farmer, and I say that I have used indosulfan, which was very useful uh, to prevent pest. But indosulfan, for example, if is used for soya bean, is not allowed to use for paddy. But somebody, my friend, when I talk, he will think that okay, indosulfan is to be used is very effective. I'll use for paddy also. These are unsustainable practices. The government of India has set up a central insecticide board and registration committee, which approves consumption, use of pesticide that include which pesticide is to be used for which crop, what will be the application method. There are some pesticides which are used on the leaves, which are sprayed. Some pesticides which are like put into the soil near the near the roots. So there are there are so this is something where the local agricultural department should also start creating awareness on uh, because the the case you might have heard a lot about Yavatmal in past uh, in uh, two years back uh, where many many farmers uh, died due to uh, due to these pesticides that was due to the cocktail of pesticides when you mix two or three pesticides uh, it becomes more poisonous not only poisonous for plant but also for you and when you spray. If the wind direction changes, you will start inhaling that because the wind direction now changed, and that is what allegedly happened in Yathmal also. So th th these are these are these are few things where 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 we we can we can start using uh, sustainable practices, and we use pesticides only for the approved purpose. regarding electronic waste management there is one question yeah so electronic waste management we have rules uh, electronic waste management rule 2016 which uh, which specifically prescribes various methods uh, how how we can manage that but at the same time india also is a very big hub of informal sector for in, uh, for electronic waste management and these informal sector people they are not as educated as you or me especially in terms of degrees but they are more knowledgeable than you and me in managing these wastes so the the issue with electronic waste management is only uh, uh, kind of uh, the technologies and processes and also they should get a proper electronic waste at a certain time because they should not get a mixed waste so that uh, that increases their burden to sort out uh the waste but electronic waste is very well managed in india uh thanks to the informal sector more than formal sector but now these formal sectors are also tying up with informal sector to get uh, rid of that so i i see another question sir the waste management is helpful for covid 19 yes yes sir okay if not why it is not implementing uh i have already mentioned some of the points for this yes. uh, definitely waste management is helpful in managing covid if you don't throw your infectious uh, waste outside it will it will prevent uh, infections to to the to the to the other population uh why it is not implementing we are not letting it implement uh, you or i have to follow our own things and then we also have to kind of make uh, the authorities also responsible for uh, for 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 what they are supposed to do uh, so that is something which we have we have we are seeing a very different kind of emergency situation right now where even the waste management practice practitioners are also overburdened and overstressed so how we can help them we can at least help them with segregating our waste into at least three one is organic waste one is dry waste and third is hazardous domestic hazardous waste which include all these you cannot i know you you will not be able to uh, uh, to uh, kind of again segregate this domestic hazardous waste into other but at least these three type of waste we can do yes sir definitely sir so thank you once again sir thank you i am very much thankful to one and all present here and uh, now i declare that technical session one is over now uh, now i hand over this session to dr vaishali charjan ma'am for technical session 2 over to you charjan ma'am thank you neha ma'am good afternoon to all
I, Dr. Vaishali Charjan from Department of Botany, welcomes you all on behalf of Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalay Nagpur in second technical session of one day national conference on emerging trends of life sciences in view of current pandemic situation organized by Life Science Department's Kamla Nehru Mahavidyalay Nagpur. This is last session of our conference. And for this, today we have with us Dr. Ashish Vargat, sir, Senior Scientist, CSIR, Palampur, Himachal Pradesh. He will deliver a talk on topic, Vertical Farming Need in COVID-19 Pandemic Era. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Ashish Vargat, sir. Welcome, sir. Before he starts the lecture, let me have a pleasure to introduce Dr. Ashish Vargat, sir. Sir had done his MSc in Botany from RTMNU Nagpur University and PhD in Biotechnology from JP University of Information Technology, DRDO, Leh Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh. On topic, Biodiversity and Conservation of Dictyloriza Hatagiria from Trans Himalayan Ladakh region of India. He had published total 45 papers in various national and international journals, having impact factor 85. He guided four PhD students and two postdoctorate students. He also served in DRDO Chandigarh. Presently, he is working as senior scientist CSIR Institute of Himalayan Bioresource Technology, Palampur, Himachal Pradesh. Main research area of SIR is hydroponics and aeroponics cultivation of medicinal plants for quality biomass production and plant cell culture technology using bioreactor based production of secondary metabolites in high value Himalayan medicinal plants. This is just a nutshell of Vargat SIR. There is a lot immense about SIR but due to short time, it becomes not possible. So to know more about advancement in this technology, we would like to invite Dr. Ashish Vargat, sir, for delivering his talk. So please welcome Dr. Ashish, sir. Over to you, Dr. Ashish Vargat, sir. Am I audible? Sir, Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Dr. Ashish from CSR IGVT Palampur. So, thank you for uh, Dr. Vaishali, ma'am, for your kind words about uh, my brief introduction. So, uh, uh, today, the name of the conference is the Emerging Trends of the Life Sciences in View of the Current uh, Pandemic Situation. So I will, uh, the, first of all, the good afternoon to all uh, the members and uh, uh, students and participants. Okay. So uh, today I'm going to deliver a lecture on uh, the modern agriculture practices that is called the vertical farming. So uh, I'm sharing, sharing the slides. My slides are visible. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, so I will tell you about the uh, vertical farming. Uh, what is the need about this? And uh, in this uh, COVID nineteen situations in the our India as well as in uh, abroad countries. So, uh, so what is vertical farming? Vertical farming is the practice of the growing produce in a vertical stacks layer. So. Uh, I will tell you the vertical farming. Farming it's a uh, farming in the uh, vertical farming it's a modern agriculture practices. In this, we use the soilless. Uh, we, we can uh, say it as a soilless agriculture practices. In this, there are three types of the. Uh, uh, there are three type of the method is there. That is called first one is the hydroponic, second one is the aeroponic, and third one is the aquaponics method. Why it is need? Because I will tell you we are working in, uh, in our India near about uh, uh, about we are. Um, Doing the traditional agriculture practices uh, from uh, from ancient uh, from ancient, 
so uh, i will tell you about to what is the modern agriculture practices is available in the uh, in our india also and in your abroad and why there is a need because and i will tell you i will uh, uh, explain about the introduction to the vertical farming uh, the what is the uh, what are the opportunity with this uh, vertical farming and uh, what are the mechanism uh, in underlying in uh, underlying for the formation of the quality biomass production and the uh, second uh, third fourth one is the nutrient medium what are the nutrient medium is essential and what are the system is available with the uh, vertical farming and what are the markets is available market is available or not so i will take uh, i will uh, explain about the market potential of this uh, system then the uh, fourth one, uh, fifth one is a management uh, system because in this system management is the uh, crucial role for the planting for the uh, production of the quality planting material and uh, uh, i will tell you about the uh, my research area uh, our institute is working on some uh, different different aspects as a plant as well as animal as well as chemistry persons so uh, like our institute is having the uh, three facilities i will uh, uh, explain uh, detail in uh, uh, in the presentation so and what was the what was the uh, what is the area we are working on when whatever the work we are doing with the uh, vertical system and uh, what are the and what, from this uh, uh, system whatever the uh, persons means uh, how many people uh, persons get benefited from this uh, system and uh, how many people are working in this system and uh, what are the uh, benefits uh, to the society or uh, to the industries and then we will uh, i will also explain about the commercial setup and economics of this plant okay so uh, Uh, first of all i will tell you about the vertical farming what are the uh, pros, uh, pros and cons of this uh, vertical farming so we can produce uh, uh, vertical farming is the nothing but the, we can uh, we can grow the plant in a small chamber or uh, large chamber with with containing the nutrient solution so that okay, that is called a uh, that is called the modern farming okay so in this what are the process uh, what are the advantage of this uh, system we can produce the year round crop production of this system and it is not related to the weather uh, related uh, crop failures and we can near about 70 to 95% uh, water we use in this system and it get recycled so there is no uh, loss of the water so healthy uh, healthy crops can be generated and more productivity per unit area uh, is the uh, main, main advantage of this uh, system and requires very less area and what are the uh, consequences of this uh, uh, vertical farming obviously it is obviously it is a high uh, it is initially it is high cost in uh, uh, high cost high cost for the preparation of the system so it requires precise monitoring it requires high energy uh, high energy in the form of the light or in the form of the uh, something uh, wind or uh, electricity or uh, solar panel so why uh, vertical farming is needed so uh, uh, as you know the increase in the global population is uh, global population is increasing day, uh, day by day and you can, you can see the figures out of, uh, in the slides so 7.6 uh, billion to up to uh, 8.6 uh, billion by 2030 and uh, in uh, i will tell you the decline of the agriculture land is the major, major biggest problem in the, our country and, uh, by, and i will tell you 70% of the uh, you can see the figure 70% of the less water land per person is available by 2030 means in ancient times or whatever the day uh, whatever the 20 years or 30 years before we can means uh, two people can accommodate in a very less space in 1950 but in 2050 uh, 2030 the six people can accommodate in, in a very small space because due to agriculture uh, shrinking of due uh, to agricultural uh, lands uh, day by day it is shrinking okay so uh, what is the urban population and the uh, the major problem is this uh, because the villagers or something uh, means villagers or the education or the uh, students they migrated towards maximum to their uh, urban uh, areas so urban population is get increase so it will increase about 1.5 billion to 2020 these are the stats you can see here so what is the uh, th this is the problem we can address here so what are the solutions for this vertical farming so we need a Uh, vertical farming would enable the urban population to food themselves for the their livelihood options so what are the vertical farms it attempts to produce a very challenging environment arable land is very rare the cities grow at different types of the herb we can uh, the cities you, uh, you already know the uh, the current uh, pandemic situation the maximum the agriculture uh, agriculture uh, persons and agriculture and even even the markets are uh, very uh, Uh, spread of these uh, covid uh, uh, situations and coronavirus uh, infection infectious uh, uh, things so 
uh, what we can what we can do means in our uh, we can we can use this technology in our land in our uh, areas in our terrace or in our uh, small uh, kitchen garden you can create this uh, system and you can produce uh, with your own because i already told you uh, we are uh, india is a developing country and you have already seen the developed countries you are, i will tell you the example of the israel okay so uh, israel claim that so israel can uh, provide the food to the uh, india because israel is a very small country because they claim because they have the technologies they have the technology they have the smart farming techniques technicians there but we have that much of the we have we have uh, expert in the our india but we are not uh, till now we are not uh, able to uh, adapt that technology it's very uh, uh, problematic in india okay so we are fully dependent on the traditional farming systems so that's like the field cultivation and other things okay so in case of this vacuum uh, this vertical farms can be used in the desert area like the mountains area they can produce their own and in the mountainous uh, towns and islands area also so what are the opportunities with this uh, vertical farm vertical farming market is you can see the figures out uh you can see the figures vertical farming market is a usd 5.8 billion uh in the market in 2020 and what is the compound annual growth rate is the 25.8 percent uh, 2016 to 2020 means the asia uh, and the asia pacific is the largest market share in the vertical farming market so uh, india is also one of them in the uh, who, who can lead the uh this market okay you can see the pictures also these are the some stats statistics so i will tell you uh, the government of india the already developed uh, already developed the constitution of the body that is called niti ayog so uh, there are the 17 type of the uh, niti ayog guideline is there 17 type of the goals is there that is called sustainable development goals i think you all already uh, seen this type of the slides uh, maybe in a uh, google or something so i will tell you to you can see the uh, sustainable development goal 2 you can see the zero angle Okay, so it in this category there is a uh, there is a criteria there is a one uh, session three is there that it, it uh, that um, session three that is called uh, double farming income in that means the pop, the people the students or whatever the uh, people is there or whatever whatever the person is there they can produce their own by using this technology and they can produce and they can earn twice thrice by using this uh, technology as compared to traditional farming. So what does I will tell you about the simple and basic uh, principle behind the hydroponic and aeroponic, how it is works, because uh, or maybe uh, mo most of the people are known about this uh, technique, but I will uh, explain because uh, the, because some people are, are from the botany, some people are from the uh, biotechnology, some people are from the commerce. So I will tell you about and some people maybe uh, they come came from the uh, engineering background. So they have to know about this uh, hydroponic and aeroponic. It is, it is it is the combination of the science and engineering. So I will tell you the uh, in details. So how it does uh, the hydroponics work? I will tell you th there are uh, five. Uh, uh, there are uh, hydroponic system is there and aeroponic system is there. So in this hydroponic system, in, in uh, uh, any type of the pump means I will tell you the one uh, we use in this our in our system we use high pressure accumulator pumps that is petroleum bus based companies there that is German based companies there so that is also called a solenoid uh, solenoid uh, that is also called as a high pressure uh, a normal pump uh, or we can use the uh, normal pump or in India made that is uh, uh, Crompton made or uh, something Kirloskar made so in hydro what happened in hydroponic how it works. I will tell you. So uh, we, uh, we have suppose we have the uh, hydroponic. We have the pump. This is the pump. Suppose and you can use this pump through the uh, through the irrigation to the nutrient uh, through the irrigation to the root zone and it get recycled. And the roots are deeply uh, deeply involved in the uh, water system that is called hydroponic system. And in that there are there are there is a one some uh, boxes there that is called growth boxes. I will uh, explain in details in uh, my other slide. And what is aeroponics? Vidyal pump pumps. We we provide. We just provide a sprinklers. Vidyal pump. We Vidyal pump pump. We use pump and to irrigate the uh, water or plus nutrient to the uh, root zone area. That is called root uh, that uh, that uh, root zone um, uh, environment. So we provide to the uh, roots. We provide the nutrient plus water to the root zone area. Vidyal pump sprinkler, just like a small uh, sprinkler. That is also called uh, sinchan. Uh, 
we can use uh, that that system is called aeroponic so there are the uh, there are the types big system is there water culture is there event flow system is there drip uh, system is there anft system is there and aeroponic system is there you can see there are different types of the system i i am not going to detail about this system because these are very basic things so i will tell you about you can see a big system water culture system the event flow is in a drip system and nft i will tell you the which system is the best one uh, for the hydroponic system nutrient field technique is the best one if your uh, pump is uh, get fail so it, in that case you can use this uh, technique i mean this system is the best one because your roots are the deep your, your roots are the deep inside the water so there is no uh, miss if your if your electricity is get fail so or your uh, pump is get fail or your your, your solar panel or whatever the uh, energy consumption is there it get fail so they, then in that uh, uh, time or in that situation you can use this system and this system is based for the hydroponic system as compared to other system so aeroponic aeroponic is the best one for the uh, production of the um, root root crops for example i will tell you the about uh, potato uh, i will tell you about uh, uh, potato onion and uh, some other uh, root crops but in hydroponic in hydroponic system you can grow you can produce the leafy vegetable you can produce the leaf, leaf part so uh, if see for example we uh, we want to if you want to grow the uh, spinach in our system so whatever this system is best one the hydroponic system is the best one if you want to produce the suppose uh, onion or uh, potato in our uh, in, in the system so in this system uh, in you can use a aeroponic system because we need uh, that much of root zone area or root zone environment uh, for the uh, better uh, disease free uh, produce uh, of the uh, uh, onion or something uh, potato so uh, what are i will tell you about the nutrient i will, i have already told about the system so now i will tell you about the nutrient what are the nutrient is the essential component in the vertical farming and uh, in this system so macronutrient and macronutrient both are the important uh, factors uh, for the growing of the plants i already uh, as you already known about this uh, systems because these are the uh, common uh, nutrients is available and it is uh, useful for the uh, Uh, pro, um, for the product formation of the quality uh, mass, by mass or uh, quality planting material and that is the essential elements that is need if some is uh, some uh, get uh, miss so uh, you cannot produce that much of the metabolite or that uh, this is true free uh, quality planting material okay so in this system you can use the different type of substrate there are different type of substrate is available in the market and you can use what are the, what are the uh, uh, what are the requirement and what are the your uh, idea or what are the type of the system you can uh, design your own or you, you can uh, develop your own so i will tell you so uh, we use in our system we use grow rock grow rock so that system is made up of the sand plus charcoal material that is used for the and we, we why we use this material because it, it uh, we can use this uh, 10 times for the uh, cultivation of the plants so that's why we uh, another you can see the another system uh, so you can uh, see the another substrate that is the one time uh, substrate we can use ah uh, sorry the river rock is the river rock uh, we can use uh, twice or thrice okay so that's why in our system we use generally grow rocks that is made up of the sand plus charcoal activated charcoal material and that that helps the plant to the cultivate and that that, that helps to support the plants and that helps the uh, for the absorption of the nutrient and the supply to the uh, uh, root zone area so what are the system requirement is essential in this system so uh, when we when we, when we uh, cultivate a plant that time ph is the major uh, things in the hydroponic system ph and electrical conductivity of the solution okay that two things are very very important and they, that two things are the uh, important important factor for the uh, pro, for the production of quality planting material if suppose i will tell you the ph I, we will uh, generally use this 5.2 uh, 5.8 to 6.4 but it depends on but i will tell you but it depends on the Uh, plant it depends on the plant it depends on the plant nature it's not it's not easy to uh, uh, use the, it's not easy to get a seedling from some some plants some plants uh, seedling is there you pick up this that seedling and put in the cultiv in the cultivation chamber that hydroponic or aeroponic and it cannot be uh, it cannot be easily uh, cultivate or it cannot easily uh, produce because it's need specific monitoring and as well as the ph and electrical conductivity of the nutrient solution Uh, is that that's why precision monitoring is the very essential criteria in this system 
so you can you can use the um, horticulture uh, lighting that is metal halide or uh, you can use the uh, perlite also and uh, and the environment and the temperature and environment condition is is needed for the plantation so 68 to 78 degree for the uh, production of the crop so what are what are the control system is required what are the control system is uh, what are the control system is required for the uh, proper uh, controlling of the system? So, programmable algae PLC is very really important with the uh, software with and uh, with the hardware and the software and along with the desktop. So, HMI is the very important things and PLC is the PLC is the just like a uh, circuits of the system uh, situated in the control panel. Okay, climate control system is very essential for the for the increase of the temperature, humidity, and uh, of the uh, lightning of the system that is photovirate. Okay, and the fertigation system. Fertigation system is also important uh, uh, criteria for the production of the plants. So in this uh, fertigation system, you can use a different type of the uh, uh, different type of the sensors as well as the uh, control panel. This as well as the probes for the irrigation to the plant system. Uh, for for the plants uh, to the irrigate to the plant system. So. Uh, I will be, uh, I have already told about the, um, about the uh, system and then their uh, working principle. So I will uh, now I will move to the uh, uh, herbal market demands. So uh, yeah, you already know about the uh, during you already know the uh, situation of the corona pandemic situations. So during co uh, COVID pandemic situations, so uh, one thing I will tell you uh, the herbal industry. But because of several uh, herbal industries and as well as Ayush, Ayush, Ayush Ministry of the uh, India, so they are uh, aware. They, they are going to develop some uh, uh, product uh, which can be treated uh, uh, during the COVID patients uh, to the COVID patient, or, uh, whether it is mild or uh, moderate one. So I will tell you the herbal market in the India because our India uh, India is uh, fully dependent on the herbal market. Near about 99, near about 90 percent of the of the people of the India, they are fully dependent on the herbal medicines. I will tell you, and this is the fact of this uh, uh, situation. But now I will tell you the, the herbal market. There is an increase in the, there is an increase in the uh, demand of the uh, of the medicinal plants. But the plants, uh, the the maximum maximum plant of the medicinal plants, the maximum plants of the maximum uh, medicinal plants are of the endangered in criteria uh, uh, category, uh, vulnerable or in uh, rare. So uh, it's very uh, problematic things. So for the uh, making of the herbal formulation of the making of the herbal uh, making of the herbal formulation or making of the drug formulation, that is a very big uh, things because we we don't have any um, that much of the uh, biomass or that much of the planting material for the production of the uh, herbal drugs or something. So that's why we are ninety percent dependent on the herbal medicine and quality. That's why they for this uh, demand and for this demand to for the fulfillment of this demand and to uh, to create uh, to fill the gap. For the demand and supply of the medicine plant, so hydroponic and aeroponic is the uh, is the essential things and essential technology for the production for the uh, for the uh, to fill the gap in, uh, in the uh, to uh, to fill the gap for the demand and supply of this uh, system. So I will tell you the herbal industry. So you can see the figure out. Uh, you can see in the slides there are herbal industry. There, there are the very uh, India shares near about uh, seven ninety uh, million dollars to the uh, uh, outside. Then India captures the near about. Uh, uh, 10 and 14 dollars and you can see the uh, herbal industry demand uh, uh, 107 billion uh, dollar in 2090 and it get it get increase 500 billion to the 2050 because we, we uh, uh, in our india we have the depositories of the medicine plant and um, uh, foreign countries or something uh, foreigners they uh, import our uh, herbal medicines and others or or uh, some raw material for the production there uh, herbal drugs or something. So we have that much of the uh, biomass or that much of the uh, repository or the, because uh, this the herbal industry or uh, sorry, uh, the herbal uh, drugs or they prepared or in our uh, India it is in uh, it is in it is in uh, going uh, it is going uh, day by day due to uh, maximum uh, dependence on the uh, herbal medicines. So according to uh, WHO the uh, even you can see the figures also. So uh, that is all about the uh, herbal medicines. And now I will uh, tell you about the uh, spice herb. Spices, I, uh, you already uh, eat uh, uh, the pizza. Okay. So in that pizza, you use the oregano. That is uh, that the, the cost of the that uh, while it's near about two fifty rupees. So uh, that is a high high. Uh, that is the high culinary health and high demand even spice herb. That is 
uh, available with this uh, local market and that is uh, that is highly important in the other uh, foreign country so you can see that these are the highly these are the uh, you can see the figures because or uh, you can see the also the slides so there are the highly demandable herbs i already uh, presented here so you can see the demand of this crop and the uh, potential of this uh, herb these are the uh, four uh, spice crops and apart from the basil i already told you during pandemic uh, covid pandemic situation basil is the first immune boosting plant uh, the people use uh, the, the people use this herb for the uh, for the preparation of the herbal drugs or for the preparation of the product formulation in a uh, to treat the uh, covid 19 uh, patients okay so basil is the uh, basil is just like a tulsi uh, is just like uh, is is a tulsi uh can, so in this uh, you can use the sweet basil or holy basil that is the that has a uh immense potential uh, even medicinal potential on other things other things so and other the, you can see the slide uh, in other herb, herb, herb crops uh, the spice crop that they the, uh, the people from the herbal industry or uh, spice industry or the uh, five star or three star they use this kind of the uh, spice in their uh, for the uh, for the making of the soup and other things so you can uh, if you uh, uh, i will tell you this, uh, uh, this one is a parsley so parsley parsley is used in the uh, preparation of the soup in the five star or three star uh, industry and that is an uh, how uh, high demand uh, so spice uh, you can see the global production the average uh, cost of the parsley uh, so of course for example 100 gram it's near about uh, uh, 700 uh, 700 uh, 700 800 uh, rupees uh, per, uh, per uh, 100 gram so that is the uh, demand okay so now i will tell you why, why it is essential what is essential because we are we are doing the uh, traditional agriculture in india why it is need so i will tell you about the precision that comes under the precision agriculture precision agri precision the accuracy is very much essential as i already told about uh, mr uh, samit joshi about uh, the accuracy of the big data means about the uh, about the uh, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning and other things about the uh, for the um, uh, yeah and iot based uh, internet thinking based that comes under the principle um, that comes under the precision uh, things so uh, i will tell you about the precision why it is essential so increasing in input application uh, efficacy big measurement of the produce because on uh, because you uh, say for example uh, i have produced uh, some uh, planting material are there in the system so for the analysis for the perspective or for the quality assessment uh, it will take near about 4 to 5 months in whatever the industry is there whatever the uh, for the uh, whatever the industry whatever the, the university is there for the uh, analysis purpose so uh, for uh, why it is necessarily quick quick measurement of the produce quality is essential for the selling of the produce produce okay on field uh, and monitoring is also essential uh, for the uh, for the preparation uh, for the uh, mon field uh, for the monitoring of the plant and application of the uh, drone based and field robots is also essential so that comes comes under the agriculture so uh, in precision agriculture why it is ai and machine learning that comes under uh, the that comes under the precision agriculture and that is used for the enhancement of the yield and plant health so in in our vertical system we we have the the same kind of the drone system we have the drone uh, in our system so with the help of drone we can measure the uh, plant health as well as the uh, plant their plant yield up to from the month wise uh, yield of the plant okay so uh we use artificial intelligence and multi, multi uh, machine learning uh, with uh, based on their algorithms uh, so there are there are there are different types of algorithm we use we have the we have my colleague uh, is uh, uh, working on the bioinformatics so he is working on the uh, um, data analysis of this uh, systems and uh, one more uh, senior fellow is there he is also working on the uh, drone base so we have the team in the csir hbt we have the team of the scientists and we are which we are working on the different aspect and to do produce and, and to monitor the yield of the produce okay so these are the uh, uh, these are the important things uh, is essential for the precision of the precision agriculture uh, under the precision agriculture that is essential for the precise monitoring of the crop and other things because we need because we are fully depend on the traditional uh, farming because uh, i will tell you the one example uh, when we uh, so, suppose we produce a large amount of the medicinal plant in our india so if you want to sell uh, this produce to the uh, other countries so quarantine measure is there so current uh, during uh, quarantine th things so they uh, refuse to uh, import this atom because we have that much of the we we have uh, uh, miss we have the heavy metals in our uh, 
quality produce we have the soil and other things and we have the disease uh, containing the herb and other things because we have we don't uh, uh, bother about these uh, things and other things so that's why the precision agriculture is the best thing and we have to monitor and uh, for the we, we have to uh, use in our daily routine or what are the experience is going on and that is a need and because uh, the, the, the israel and other countries they are also doing the same and they produce large amount of the and they produce large even even uh, the new zealand they produce uh, tomato uh, year round tomato tree okay year round production of the tomato in the tree they because they have developed the technique they have developed the technique and technology and they with the technology they produce something so they have the one tree that, uh, that and uh, that occurs uh, and uh, that is related to the tomato no festival and other things okay so uh, so that is the essential in the agriculture things so now i, I will tell you about the nutrient management thing, uh, system in vertical aeroponic system or vertical farming system or vertical hydroponic system so nutrient for the nutrient management is the best thing and that is important for the management practices in the for the production of the crops okay so we have in this system we have we use there, there are different type of the sensor uh, ultrasonic sensor humidity, uh, humidity sensor related uh, and the chiller sensor there are there are different sensor we can use and that system is called a scada based supervised data control so we develop side a scada based operate that is the high end technology okay so nowadays this technology already use the persons uh, in the abroad uh, uh, my internet is available okay okay so uh, am i audible yes sir yes sir you are audible yeah yeah Actually, network issues there. Okay, so you can see the slides. Uh, there are several sensors and actuators is also available uh, in the system, and this can be used in the uh, for the production of the plants. You can see the pH sensor. Yes, sir. These are the routinely used in our chemistry lab or something uh, in uh, botany lab. Okay, so we can use this sensor, and we can modify. Uh, you can develop. We can develop also sensor because it's very uh, costly sensor. So we can develop in our India. There are so many engineers. Is there so many? Uh, uh company so, so, so many uh, engineers so many scientists science person is there so they can made their own and they can sell it sell it sell out to the industry because that is a very much essential and that is required for the uh, uh, system so i now i will tell you about my research area in our csi and what we we have did and what we are doing here so uh, i will tell you hydroponic cultivations so I, you can see the picture Uh, in this my in my slide there are lily is there and tulip is there that is the that two crops is the high value cut flower is there these are the high value crops so you can uh, i will tell you the the maximum uh, is uh, maximum the in lily the average life cycle of the crop it's i will tell you over the science, scientific uh, intervention in this uh, what i did in the, the scientific intervention this uh, system okay so average life cycle of the lily crop in field condition it's near about 5 to 6 month okay uh, and with the help of this system with the help of with the help of hydroponic system we use we reduce the cropping cycle of the cycle, uh, cropping cycle of the lilium and it reduces to 60 days so means we can accommodate year, we can produce the year round flower production with the help of this system so uh, in field condition we get only we can get only one cycle one cropping cycle one yield only But in this system, we we can with the help of system with the help with the help of this system with the help of this technique, we can produce year-round flower production and we can get the six yield, six cycles of the cropping cycles, as uh, in case of the lilium. And also tell you or told you about the tulip that is available in the Kashmir and uh, uh, in the Mughal Garden of the uh, Delhi. Okay, so tulip is the high value uh, uh, flower crop that is also a comes under the cut flower uh, and that is used. Both crops are used in the marriage and other things and flower industries. they for the sale of and that is the high in demand okay so in tulip the average life cycle of the plant is 3 to 4 month in field conditions 3 to 4 years in the field condition but i got the, that uh, cropping cycle i got the yield within one month means i can produce 12 cycles in this system in year round production but in field condition we can get in within one, one only uh, two cycles we can get okay so you can see the you can see the stacks also you can see the uh, data also okay we uh, in this system we you, uh, we uh, monitor the temperature is number 22 and the relative humidity is 65 and the photo period is 65 by 
and uh, pH and electrical conductivity is a very very essential. I already told you about the electrical conductivity of the system. So uh, the uh, initial material we use the initial material as a uh, the bulb bulb that's like a onion bulb. Okay, so we use a bulb and that uh, um, first we we uh, we forcing that bulb with the help of a cold chamber and for the four to eight uh, four to six week and then then, uh, then after we use that bulb. For the production of the uh, flower, okay. So in that uh, in that situation, so we uh, the, 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 the lilium bulb is just like a child. So uh, we uh, we get to the nutrient plus water to the uh, bulb uh, as an uh, uh, once they get uh, uh, in a high once the plant it is in high uh, it get um, increase the we we put we feed the nutrient plus water to the system or and uh, to the root zone area and it will get in uh, it get absorbed through the roots uh, roots and it will it get increase the uh, plant height okay so this is about the hydroponic cultivation of the flower crop so any crop any crop any flower crop you can produce you can produce this by you can use nowadays uh, the edible flower is the biggest uh, things uh, rising in india as well as in foreign uh, foreign country edible flower is the uh, is very much essential and that is highly and uh, highly nutritious and antioxidant rich uh, uh, flower crops there are the portulaca is there cosmos is there there are there are so, so many flower edible flower is there so you can produce there you can produce with this technology for the year round production of the flower okay so now i will tell you about the picuraza curva that, that uh, i will tell you about the this is the medicine plant first story i have already, i have already told about the flower crop that has a high demand in the flower industry and other and anybody can do the, the uh, on their own uh, and then i will tell you about the picuraza curva that is a medicine plant that is we, we use this medicine plant in the for the uh, for the preparation of the herbal drugs or you know even aish aish 64 just release the uh, aish 64 just release the medicine Uh, that uh, 60 i64 that uh, uh, that contains the uh, extract of the plant so one one plant is there uh, one plant is this picuraza uh, curva i second was uh, so i will tell you about the story of this what uh, we did with this plant okay this is a endangered plant it is uh, available in the medicinal it is available in the himalayas and uh, average uh, demand is of, uh, of this crop is 500 tons and the supply is very less 100 tons so it is contain the it is uh, it is having the uh, some uh, it is having the hepatitis protective so in our market in our indian market or something our foreign market the new 52 new 52 picrolu these are the product already available in the market that contains the picro uh, picraza curva rhizome okay so you can see the picture that is the picraza curva picture uh, image of the plant so you can see the uh, even the herbal drugs available in the market okay so what was the uh, why uh, what we did with this plant i will tell you so um, about the uh, in detail so i will tell you about uh, there are several herbal formulations is available in the market katuki jhandu pharma arogya jhandu pharma kutiki kutiki and uh, developed by the tanush uh, herbal uh, drugs and leopard so i will tell you to uh, actually think uh, actually major things uh, it is uh, with the herbal formula herbal uh, plant is the bioactive contents so uh, these herbal formulation contain this amount of the picroside 1 2 and picroside uh, total accumulation of this uh, um, picroside that is required for the preparation that is at least at least we required for the preparation of the so uh, for the preparation of the uh, herbal drugs or uh, uh, drugs preparation so we need this much amount of the bioactive content in the plant and that is that plant is contained uh, that is uh, the plant is found in the himalayan high altitude regions that is uh, that is in very less amount okay so we can what we did so with the help of this technology i will tell you so we cultivate this seedling uh, under hydroponic and aeroponic uh, system so you can see within we we, uh, we use uh, seedling initial material is near about 2 to 3 cm of the uh, seedling of the plants and we put in a system and we produce within 4 months to 5 months we get the, that much of the yield of the picrosite one that is required for the preparation of the herbal drugs so in this in this uh, system i will tell you in himalaya the plant is available in the himalaya the plant is available in the uh, high altitude region so average accumulation of the desired metabolite of the picrosite 1 and 2 it takes near about 4 to 5 years i will i will repeat also uh, in picuraza curva 4 to 5 years is required for the accumulation of the desired metri, desired uh, metabolite accumulation okay but with the help of our technique we use 6 month old we we use six month tissue culture uh, raised plant or we can use uh, outside the plants of the nursery grown plants we use that plant 
so of the date of the 6 month old and from a 6 month and they we put it for the 4 month again so it the average uh, every uh, plant age is about uh, the average uh, plant age is uh, 10 months so uh, it's near about 4 years to 1 year it's near about 1 1 year so uh, within 1 year we get this yield in within uh, we, we get the yield for, and we uh, can sell it out or the preparation we can sell it out to the industry or we can sell it to the other um, uh, some uh, nurseries uh, for their own benefit or for their, their preparation or something or herbal formulation or something so because they need this much of the quality raw material because they need a quality biomass uh, material with which is having the disease free produce so in this system it is a control environment and it's a control environment system we can produce year round flower year round leaf as well as the root production for the for in the year round manner okay we have did this one with the picrosa crua so again we uh, second example i will tell you about the valeria jatamasi jata jatamasi it is used with this sleep disorders okay that in in even the companies uh, sold their product also with their name uh, with we use by using uh, rhizomycin x plant okay so uh, you can see there their demand is there but supply is very less so it is also a endangered category what we did what we did with this system we use 6 month old nursery grown plant and put in the hydroponic and aeroponic system and within one year we get that much of the yield that produce in the 2 uh, 3 uh, that produce in the field grown plant of the valeria jatamasi that that both are, both research are published in the our international journal which having the five impact factor and uh, even i will tell you about this story what about the, this somebody some person some, some uh, researchers uh, lis, uh, read this literature and read this uh, our my, our uh, manuscript and uh, what we, what uh, what is the linkage between the our uh, our side and their side i will tell you about the what uh, they they have what they have approach okay so uh with the help of these these with the help of these techniques so i will tell you about the uh, uh, the the people the people or the persons or the student can uh, produce their own, they can uh, create their own uh, company they can create their own uh, company with the help of incubity so uh, as a incubity or uh, under cm startup scheme so in himachal pradesh the cm startup scheme is there i don't know the himachal in maharashtra is there or not cm startup scheme in under the cm startup scheme so the people or person or student can there uh, that uh, he can earn near about 25000 per month the salary and he can uh, produce uh, their uh, their uh, planting material in our facility means in our facility use, is used as an incubator is an institutional uh, incubation facility he can produce he or she can produce their own uh, material here and even uh, um, for the one year and then he can start their business he can start the, uh, her or his uh, uh, their business for their uh, productivity for their benefit and for their uh, upliftment so uh, i will tell you one guy is there so uh, he is my student so he just uh, one year before he just uh, st- start uh, he join as a startup under hydroponic system and production uh, he produce the strawberry as well as the cardamom uh, that is like choti lychee okay so uh, he produce both the product and it is now 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 it is in market he is he is selling and he already develop establish one company his company that name is yuktika biotech and nutraceutical private limited these are the opportunity i will tell you so uh, with the help of this system you, uh, the people can use this technology and we can uh, the, the people can use this technology and to produce uh, their own and they can crew, they can do whatever they want to do in startup uh, point of is or as a career or in uh, research areas so I, again i will tell you about the second story so he is my also uh, he is also my student so he just uh, um, develop he just uh, uh, develop as one start um, he just join as a one startup under uh, csr hbt uh, so now he uh, what what he did so he is doing uh, uh, actually lily vine cult- uh, tulip cultivation throughout the year our technology we have we have sell this technology to this than uh, near about 6x 7 lakhs for the uh, ring their own and he is doing now the the, the uh, tod is already there so he is doing the, the technology and he, he is doing the uh, production of the uh, lily and tulip around a year and he has now i will tell you i am happy to show you the both persons here about they got uh, 1.5 lakh per uh, month got, they got the salary means they not got got salary they got they got uh, their own is they got uh, income from this uh, startup is apart from this scholarship they can they can 
uh, they get there is uh, 1.5 lakh uh, for the income of this and what is it by by selling this uh, by selling this uh, planting material to the others and he is also means uh, both persons are uh, in, uh, jointly uh, develop one company that is uh, i have already told you the yuktika okay so i will tell you about the uh, the that uh, that story about the pikura sakurva and jata well jata masi so we deal about this technology i will uh, have already uh, uh, explain you about the uh, lily man to live the power production so the, you can uh, the lily base uh, person dakshit goel he already uh, agreed uh, agreed uh, agreed with the moe over with our issues so i have sold uh, this technology to these uh, persons for the lily man to live uh, cultivation as well as we have established means from our uh, side from our ibd side we have also established that uh, hydroponic facility in our in uh, delhi region so uh, and other company hydro crops that is a place in the mohali base that is jalandhar in punjab that is a hydro crop company that is uh, uh, purely working on the uh, quality planting material the production of the quality planting so we sell this we sell uh, the uh, pikuraza guru and uh, welne jata masi on both crops uh, for the cultivation as well as the uh, production of this crop so that two companies have already uh, sell this technology so i will uh, tell you about the, uh, i have already tell you about the uh, technology starter these are the opportunities so that's why i put these slides in our uh, in my presentation so apart from this i will tell you there are several uh, several uh, commercial design is available in our uh, india you can see this commercial design is already uh, available this is the 100 1000 acres square it is available in the uh, jaipur uh, okay that is the hydroponics system is already available so this is this system commercial hydroponic uh, commercial design of the aeroponic so it is already available uh, in the uh, uh, uttar pradesh area okay so they produce uh, they they 10000 uh, fruits in a single harvest so there that that means the our india in our india you know the people are already uh, getting this uh, uh, getting adapted uh, adapted this technology and they are doing and uh, some because uh, hardly 5 to 5, 6% they are doing uh, uh, the what, business of the on the hydroponic aeroponi but uh, we our in our india the we are working fully on the traditional agriculture and uh, uh, considering the fact of the covid 19 you can you can start your own uh, business and you can start this uh, technology or this technique um, with uh, in uh, by your own uh, land or something Oh, you can see uh, this is commercial design of the vertical aeroponic it is also available in the himachal region <clears throat> so uh, now uh, um, i have already uh, in my slides i have already told about the mechanism what are the system and other things so you can see i this these are all all about the strategies because the economy is the basic, because i already told you uh, in my uh, second slide so in that that is the disadvantage with the system in the cost economics that is the way, biggest problem with the Uh, vertical farming system. So in our uh, uh, India, Indian system like uh, Jugaad system. So like like there are various system. There are various engineers there. So you the, the engineer people you can make you can develop own with your own design and you can develop with by using low cost technology because the Mexican the people use the uh, uh, suppose I will tell you the uh, example of the pump. So they use the German made base uh, pump that is uh, the cost is uh, around one point five lakh. So you can use the Crompton or something uh, low cost uh, kiloscope pump that is around forty forty to fifty lakhs. Sorry, fifty thousand. Uh, so I have uh, you can see the slides. So lithium is the highest among the flower. For government job, married lady claim कर सकती है. Sorry. या तो फिर बहुत गरीब हो और मैं prove करना पड़ेगा सोबी court में. माइक so you can this uh, you can second one is the tulip with the body system in one acre area you can get the yield within the one and half year uh, one and half a uh, year, uh, year you can get the yield and you can get the uh, cost of economy uh, cost of production and you as a uh, on the cost of economies of these plants okay this is tulip so you can you, you can produce lettuce also that is that is a high uh, value i didn't reach uh, salad crop so we uh, so nowadays the median uh, middleman they are using nowadays in india they are uh, uh, eating these uh, lettuce and other things that is salad crop is very uh, nowadays boom in the uh, in our india in even engineers they left their job 
and uh, they produce their own by using by, by they uh, they produce their uh, lettuce and in the uh, you, you have seen the actually one uh, guy is there in goa uh, he left the job of the software engineer and he uh, start to produce their venture and he produce uh, lettuce in a uh, 500 uh, square meter area and he produce a lot a lots so he he can produce and sell it to the uh, and he can earn about uh, 2.5 lakhs per uh, uh, month so in uh, newspaper is uh, uh, we got the news uh, news in the newspaper also so meet this is the already uh, required work for the herbal industry you can see the vidarbha these are the all stats i will i will tell you of the all stats because you uh, because every persons uh, are eagerly waiting for the uh, how much uh, it yield how much we can get uh, how much uh, it will uh, benefited so these are all stats i have uh, presented here and that will be benefited to the, your uh, to you okay so mint you can get within be benefit ratios you can get within benefit cost is one and you uh, cost of uh, economics is there so we can get the yield within 1.5 uh, means 1.1 uh, and a half years so in case of um, basil same thing 1.8 years you can get this yield basil is a day to see that is used in the herbal formulation also and the property preparation of the even booster uh, formulations partly that is used in the Uh, for the preparation of this uh, soup and other things, and that is also used in the uh, using the uh, medicinal use, medicinal uh, anti-carbamatic and uh, anti-asthmatic something. Okay, and then thyme that is also used in the uh, um, herbal formulations. So these are the crop that has the high uh, that is the spice and other thing. You can see the oregano that we can also produce. So these all are all crops we produce. Uh, in our uh, ibt so and these are the all the stats are, it is uh, dealing with the uh, uh, system so uh, i have already told about the economic but that is the essential thing so uh, i will tell you about the uh, uh, so why we uh, why I, i have already told you about this uh, uh, vertical farming system so we we people are uh, maximumly uh, depends on the traditional process. so we have to move on the uh, uh, new modern agriculture uh, system or technique that is essential for the uh, something so for the production something and for the earning purpose and you can get the double or triple deal i am definitely told you because i have the example of this system and uh, i am we i am having the five years experience with this system but they can they can they can growing they can growing this system and they can uh, they can produce growing their produce and they can uh, develop and they, they are doing and also so uh, the the people the attendees from this uh, uh, from this uh, the students and other thing faculty member or other thing whatever the uh, attendees are available the, so uh, these are the area that can be implemented that can be used uh, for the uh, as a, for their uh, for their own career career and some, something they want to produce their startup or something or they, they can do it because we uh, or sir uh, mr sabir joshi already told about uh, so don't give uh, means you create your uh, job by by giving to the um, uh, persons um, to, to the other people means you can create your employment that is the biggest uh, things is our, our that is biggest thing is uh, uh, nowadays and uh, already our prime minister is already told about the atmanirbhay bharat so uh, we have to move uh, on this uh, atmanirbhay bharat because we have so many engineers we have the scientific person we have the, there are so many talented person talented person is uh, in our india is available so but they want to they don't do, but they don't want to uh, use that much of the uh, potential uh, they know they they have the potential but they don't know the, the their potential so they can use so it's all about uh, vertical farming so thank you very much thank Hello. you sir for nicely explaining the technique of vertical farming and how it becomes possible to do farming in small place with high yield also how can we grow herbal plants in this current pandemic situation now the session is open for discussion if anyone wants to ask some question they may proceed yes anybody wants to ask some question do you have any query please participate You 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 can uh, you can uh, drop me the email or you can <clears throat> call me. My number is already there. So means anybody having the some concern or something, so they can also ask um, uh, after the session or also any time throughout the year. <laughs> yeah, I Dr. think uh, no Rashish, query. Uh, yeah, uh, 
madam i i want to ask yeah yeah, yeah, yeah okay please. sir dr ashish first of all let me congratulate that you have done so nicely explain the new technology and which has got a lot of importance and benefits that is hydroponics and aeroponics uh my question is uh, being from the vidarbha region of maharashtra where temperature has got a huge fluctuations which goes to the 8 degrees and lifted to 40 45 degrees so uh, what kind of crops uh, you can suggest which can be grown into hydroponic uh, system number 1 and uh, what will be a kind of economics involved into it okay. sir i will tell you about the system in our uh, vidarbha so uh, yeah um, In our system, in our uh, weather, bad there is a temperature near about forty-five to fifty degrees Celsius. So uh, actually, uh, my colleague is there in Pune. It is available. Uh, is my uh, colleague. So uh, name is uh, that company. Name is Morrison Company. So uh, he along with me, uh, we we have both uh, we have both uh, develop one uh, uh, system in uh, that is low cost. Uh, greenhouse and that contains the cooling pad. Apart from this, because we need the uh, climate. climate control uh, greenhouse we need so uh, he is a basically engineer so he uh, because the chill i will tell you the uh, for the cooling capacity cooling uh, uh, cooling for the cooling uh, things we need a ac and for the root zone area we need a chiller that chiller system is called that is around the cost is near about agar suppose uh, for example 5.5 ton ka agar ac hai it's near about uh, the cost is near about 2 uh, 3 lakhs or uh, uh, the the chiller cost is around 3 uh, ton so the cost is around 4 uh, lakhs so he has developed one uh, chiller like system within 50 uh, 5500 sorry 55000 within 55000 so uh, we have just uh, type uh, mov with uh, some uh, state of the maharashtra he he is uh, the main leader so in that uh, system we, we are doing to, we are planning to do in the uh, nasik region uh, we are planning to do in the pune region also pune region so uh, we uh, we are uh, in that we are doing uh, means we will do uh, the uh, andrographis paniculata that is the med uh, medicinal plant as available and that, that require in the uh, vidarbha region because of the um, that uh, cmap uh, one uh, one uh, issue is there in uh, lucknow uh, cmap That, uh, that their center is available in the pune and other things so they uh, told me about the endocrine capis endocrine capis that can be easily that can be we can use the uh, we can uh, produce the uh, for the pro, uh, quality planting material and the uh, industries from the herbal industry from the pune and other things they want uh, the uh, first thing is the uh, endocrine capis paniculata so we can produce endocrine capis paniculata you can use we can use we can produce the some other crops suppose for example uh, that moringa moringa is there also there were so there are, because because each plant ha uh, has a specific nutrient recipe it's very uh, initially it's very difficult to manage the things because um, it's very it's a soilless culture because we put a nutrient plus water in the system and we don't know what is going on so uh, it's very difficult and uh, initially near about it will suppose for example one, uh, uh, one crop is there so if you want to produce their recipe it will take near about 2 3 months for the accuracy of the uh, cultivation purpose so that is the main uh, things so uh, right now so i have uh, five years experience uh, of this hydroponic uh, i develop i have developed near about 12 uh, medicine plants uh, recipes that is because the nutrient recipe is the major major things in the hydroponic system so you can develop the moringa you can produce uh, you can produce the moringa endocrine spinoculata you can uh, develop some other crops that ha having the herb herb crop that that having the high potential or medicinal or something so uh, so that is the uh, answer sir. so and the economics of this uh, sir, i will tell you so uh, the um, the average uh, suppose the when you go to the uh, industries uh, or uh, vendors or some uh, private companies there are so many companies available in the india so uh, for example for if you want to grow if you want to if you want to produce your uh, if, sorry if you want to establish your 100 square meter area it's required near about 26 lakh for the uh, setup of this uh, that system but in india uh, we have the um, royal uh, sorry, sorry we have the schemes on the uh, polyhouses not in the not in a hydroponic and aeroponic system the same thing uh, the same thing uh, uh, the, um, in uh, in foreign country 
that they are having the uh, uh, schemes on the um, hydroponic hydroponic that is the biggest uh, drawback in our uh, in our system so if suppose, suppose for example state ministry or some agriculture ministry they they uh, they can uh, they can if if they implement the um, uh, the schemes on this so so uh, maximum the farmers and uh, other things they can they can, they need only 5 to 6 lakhs for the uh, other things for the extra things so other things uh, can be uh, um, get from the uh, state ministry thank you sir, so much sir there is one question in chat box is any yeah. institute or department for training for this modern technique like aeroponic or hydroponics vertical farming so we are conducted we have conducted uh, every year the uh, training on hydroponic and aeroponic so uh, last 3 years we have conducted but due to this uh, corona situations and corona pandemic situations we are unable to because we are believe in the practical things uh, because uh, uh, there are same ones, there are so many online courses is there and online training is there on uh, hydroponic and aeroponic you can attend but uh, when we working on the hydroponic that is the agriculture when we working on the hydroponic aeroponic system so you have to know about the practical things because when you uh, uh, do it so that time uh, you have to uh, the accuracy is most important so so uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely uh, my, my number is already i will i will tell you the my number or you can uh, check the my csr hbt website my email id is there you can uh, drop the mail uh, drop me a mail uh, regarding the training so uh, maybe um, after july we can uh, uh, do the tech, uh, training and other things because nowadays it's very difficult to organize the training so uh, you can write a miss i will tell you my number uh, yeah uh, 9810146345 98 again i repeat uh, 9816146345 or you can uh, write a, uh, you can uh, um, I, i will tell you about my email id so ashish vargad a s h i s h w a r g h a t at the rate of i h v t dot race dot in again i repeat a s h i s h w a r g h a t at the rate of i h b t dot race dot in this is my email id you can drop me an email also for this uh, query and something thank you once again sir yeah. yes it's time now for oral feedback i request participants for their valuable views regarding this national conference so please if anyone wants to present their oral feedback please proceed i think uh, dr rachna pachori from rajasthan aryan mahavidyalaya washim wants to present some views yes madam uh, dr rachna pachori ma'am yes ma'am yes thank you ma'am so good afternoon one and all on behalf of all the participants i dr rachna pachori assistant professor and head department of microbiology ra college washim extend a deep sense of gratitude to the organizers of this national conference for organizing such an informative academic feast the technical sessions are very nicely organized and all the speakers had given their best to explain the information on their selected topic Mr Samir Joshi sir has given an informative talk on startups which is definitely fruitful for the present youth for entering into new skillful jobs as well as entrepreneurship honorable dr jitendra sharma sir and honorable dr ashish vargat sir has delivered an informative talk about sustainable development and hydroponics respectively which is very useful in the current pandemic situation for all of us this conference generated a lot of ideas about expanding the skills and professional qualifications really the conference has achieved its objectives congratulations dr badwik sir dr dahikar sir dr shardul wag and all the organizing committee members of the national conference on emerging trends of life sciences in view of current pandemic situation thank you thank you very much thank you very much thank to one and all thank you very much uh next participant i think uh, prachi chandrakar from government npg college of science raipur chatisgarh wants to share something yes uh, rach uh, prachi yes prachi ma'am are you there yes ma'am 
okay thank you all of you dear participants uh, let me have announced that the link for feedback form will be shared on telegram group very shortly you will get certificate on your mail id only after feedback uh, submission of feedback form now i would like to call dr pradeep dilkar sir vice principal kamla nehru mahavidyalaya to sum up the conference over to you dr dilkar sir am i audible am i audible yes sir yes sir audible audible yes sir good afternoon to one and all at the outset i pay humble homage to great visionary late sri govindra ji bandari founder president of amar seva mandal it's my immense pleasure to give concluding remarks on technical session of today's national conference on emerging trend of life sciences in view of current pandemic situation organized by department of life sciences kamla nehru mahavidyalaya in nagpur use of different tools in this situation of pandemic is essential and hence we organize this conference this national con conference starts with gracious inaugural function inaugurated by honorable advocate abhijit banzari mlc and secretary of amarsewa mandal the keynote address delivered by eminent resource person honorable dr samir joshi ceo i transform on topic covid 19 life sciences after the vaccine he explain well the role of life sciences in public health it is nothing but a community health problem problem public health tree including includes a many components he explain public health management professional in india he explain current shortage of health tools why to learn public health system and what care has to be taken during this pandemic he also explain uh, health and hospital management he has given the role of national health policy about health care industry role of doctors nurse he said need parallel to medical equal to paramedical workforce also state jaan hai to jahan hai describe well the difference in injection and vaccinator how it is given how it is to be given in view of skill set for handling specimen as well as training procedure need skill set he explain ecg and emg technology skills for non communicable diseases cardiac care need of skill and new employment in this field future is for to create covid care ex but in short there is a tremendous scope of job opportunity in healthcare industry in addition with digital health the talk is more informative and more useful to the career of life sciences fraternity thank you dr samir doshi sir as you have given explanation from milestone to current technologies used in healthcare the technical session starts with eminent speaker honorable dr jitendra sharma uh, on important topic general overview of waste management waste management and international convention i have very proud feelings he was alumni of our kamla nehru college in his conversation he talks about un environment program related to various environmental issues he address over unstable unsustainable demands in asia and the pacific region and its driver of resources I explain increasing waste generation particularly with figures the sustainable resources resource management also discuss need to be done at the local and national levels control of waste by separating hazardous and non hazardous wastes then the priority sectors of for asia pacific road map for scp and explain role of stakeholders policy responses to waste management and road map for levies bans i think 
many things we learn from his talk it is more exciting and informative thank you dr jitendra sharma sir second technical session the talk by eminent speaker dr ashish vargat sir on topic vertical farming he explained well the vertical farming and market for vertical farming reasons for vertical farming is as population increase he also explained vertical farm produce food also there is more opportunity for vertical farming in vertical farming hydrophonic and aerophonic uh, systems works system requirement control system with climate control system and fertigation system also discuss the herbal market for herbal industry precision agriculture it is done with a, one new concept use with artificial intelligence and machine learning explain well how sensors and actuators are useful in production system everything he explain in detail useful to everyone this talk is more and more informative and interactive thank you dr ashish arbit arbat sir all the talks are so nice informative our kamla nehru mahavidyalaya always tries to upgrade the knowledge of students and also work for marginalized disadvantaged community it is possible because of great sources are with us such as president of amar seva mandal honorable dr suhasini vandari madam secretary and mlc honorable advocate abhijit vandari sir treasurer honorable dr smita vandari madam our principal sir rightly said in this uh, in his introductory remark he said don't be afraid of due to worse situation wait and watch situation comes in favor finally i congratulate to convener and organizing committee for grand success of this national conference with this i conclude my words hand over to dr charjan madam thank you sir time comes to end the event i invite dr pravin dombre sir to propose vote of thanks over to you dombre sir hello madam am i audible and visible yes sir okay so uh, a very good afternoon all of you i would like to give one information that every participant here has to fill a feedback feedback uh, form as early as possible because after this only the certificates will be generated for this conference and this conference will be over only after the national anthem so i request every participant here to wait till our national anthem is over now i come to the vote of thanks main objective of this conference is to provide ideal platform and opportunity to share research ideas with the eminent scientists academicians and policy makers students researchers and promote research activities and education in life sciences to create awareness about new development in current covid pandemic time i feel the objective of this conference has been fulfilled being a part of this national level conference on emerging trends of life sciences in view of current pandemic situation organized by kamla nehru mahavidyalaya nagpur i am feeling very privileged to propose the formal vote of thanks first of all i pay my humble homage to the great visionary leader honorable late shri govind banjari sir founder president of amar seva mandal i am very very delighted to thank to honorable dr suhasini vanjari madam president of amar seva mandal for her constant motivation and inspiration for all kinds of student centric developmental activities thank you very much madam i am feeling proud to thank to honorable mlc advocate abhijit ji vanjari sir secretary amar seva mandal for her constant motivation and inspiration for all kinds of student uh, all kinds of activities 
student centric developmental activities and also uh, in spite of his busy schedule in this covid pandemic situation he could give us his valuable time and guided all the way to organize this conference thank you very much sir i sincerely thank honorable dr smita vanjari madam treasurer of amar seva mandal with her guidance and support it has become possible to arrange because of the madam it has become possible to arrange this conference in this critical situation of covid pandemic i am sincerely thankful to mr samir joshi sir founder and chairman i transform transgender services private limited mumbai being so kind to accept our invitation to be a chief guest and keynote speaker thank you very much sir sir has thrown light on urbanization climatic change global warming zoonotic disease condition product development and innovation he has actually shown path and also shown various ways to have the opportunities as public health managers healthcare paramedical workforce uh, from phlebotomist to vaccinator radio radiologist histopathologist and many more he also given one way of having the job and also becoming a entrepreneur that is digital health so thank you very much sir you have given very uh, good message and also you have shown the light from uh, you have shown us a way from job giver uh, from becoming a job giver instead of becoming a job seeker thank you very much sir i sincerely thank dr jitendra sharma sir program management officer at un environment program for accepting un, uh, UN environment program geneva for accepting our invitation to be a part of this conference thank you very much sir uh, sir just a minute so so uh, sir has enlightened us on waste management and international conventions climatic change resource efficiency health and productive ecosystem uh sustainable uh, consumption and production sustainable chemical management prevention of zoonotic diseases by biodiversity conservation and biochemical waste management i am extremely thankful to you sir i am thankful to dr ashish varghat sir senior scientist csir institute of himalayan bio research technology himachal pradesh for accepting our invitation and imparting in depth knowledge in vertical farming so he he actually gave thorough information on vertical farming and also uh, also how the students can, and also uh, uh, job seekers and uh, uh, entrepreneurs can get a job and can develop their industry uh, since because of this covid 19 <coughs> pandemic covid 19 pandemic we all are facing critical situations and jobs have been lost lost so how to develop hydroponics aeroponics aquaponics uh, and people can produce uh, organic vegetables and herbs at home and can have a better health or healthy life i am very very grateful to dr dilip badwaik sir principal of kamla nehru mahavidyalaya for encouraging guiding and ensuring all the resources required to arrange this conference thank you very much sir thank you i extend my thanks to dr pradeep dahikar sir vice principal kamla nehru mahavidyalaya for his assistance in every respect towards organization of this conference thank you very much sir i would like to thank convener of this conference dr shardul wak sir hod biochemistry department kamla nehru mahavidyalaya for his continuous efforts to organize and coordinate all the activities effectively thank you very much sir i am honestly thankful to the organizing committee members comprising of teaching staff technical staff and non teaching staff with special mention to professor sachin jhade sir and his entire team minal madam neha uh, madam 
and vaishali madam and all all the members of the organizing committee they all worked hard to glorify this conference and ensured smooth conduction of this program thank you all all the members of the organizing committee without this uh, this program couldn't have been possible i am thankful to all of them who are directly and indirectly involved in organizing and conduction of this conference last but not least i would especially like to thank all the students and participants because of your active participation this conference has become a grand success thank you all i request all the participants to fill feedback form compulsorily to generate the certificate before conducting the vote of thank i would request technical team to play national anthem or to you sir भारत माता की जय जय विद द परमिशन ऑफ द चेयर आई डिक्लेयर दैट द कॉन्फ्रेंस इज ओवर हैव अ गुड टाइम अहेड थैंक्स टू ऑल वंस अगेन थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू